And that was the first time Easy had really like heard her sing. He was uh -huh. in there like eyes wide open. Like, <laughs> he like, man, y'all sound like a fucking pop group or some <laughs> shit. He was like, that shit sound crazy. Yeah. Like gone. He was yeah. like, oh, I'm about to make some money with Tom. What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court on the Holding Court Podcast here with the team. What's up with your producer, Ken? Man, we we getting close. This is <laughs> yeah, like man. almost the entire group. We're, we we one short. <laughs> we're one short after this. Yeah, exactly. What's up with you, Rachel Renee? I know you you fanned out today. We in here heated heavy. Man, listen, Sorry. we got a special special guest uh, in the house, and you know I don't say that lightly. Um, I would say arguably one of the most complete artists, rap artists in the game, um, Grammy Award winner, MTV Award winner, uh, American Music Award receiver, a um, couple records breaking and all of that shit. Um, but man, y'all asked for it. Y'all been asking, the fans have been asking, and we finally got it. We got Crazy Bone, a.k.a. Leatherface. What's cracking, homie? Yes, indeed. What's up, man? What's up with it? What's going on? What's All going good. on, man? I appreciate you coming, brother. Man, thanks for having me. Been yes, a long sir. time uh, coming. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> We've yeah. been trying to put this together for a minute, man. When he walked in, I showed him a picture that we took in 1999. Yeah. Throwback. I, uh, I opened up for you. I can't remember what city <laughs> we was in. Um, I don't know. Who knows? But, you know, we took that picture and we was we was kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw the picture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. That was right <laughs> around uh, thug mentality time or something yeah. like that. So, like I've done, I've had your brothers on. Mm -hmm. I've had Flesh and Bone stack. I've had B on. I had Lazy on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And all the fans know that when it comes to Bone, we don't do the run of the mill bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know, we gonna get into the music. We gonna put our fan hats on today, mm -hmm. and we gonna just just have fun and just yeah. go into your illustrious career and. And everything from there, you know what I mean. Okay, so, cool, cool. Um, so I kind of want to start from the beginning, but a different beginning than everybody else. We're not gonna go through the easy e shit because we already know that story. Mm -hmm. But what I'm curious to know is, you grew up Jehovah's Witness, mm, yeah, right? Yes. What was that upbringing like? And 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 also the second part of the question: Do you feel like it was oppressive? Man, uh, I. Um... The upbringing, it, it, it was cool. Like it, like, like we was a normal family. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. our parents were, were a little more strict on us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, we we had to watch who we associated with, and you know what I'm saying that like things of that nature. But you know what I'm saying? We we grew up like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? We didn't celebrate holidays, or birthdays, and stuff like that. I still don't to this day. I don't celebrate holidays, birthdays, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I still study with Jehovah's Witnesses. So okay, and I don't feel like it's it was. It was oppressive at all. To me, it was very, very enlightening. Mm -hmm. Very enlightening. You know what I'm saying? Once you get up, I mean, all kids, like when you're young and like you're being forced to do something that you don't want to do by your parents, of course, it's going to seem like, oh, oh you know, this is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But once you get old enough to like really understand what was being talked about mm -hmm. and you listening to the message and you hearing it and everything is making sense, you know what I'm <clears> saying? <throat> that, that, that's, that's, that's where I'm at with it. Okay. It kind of seemed like it'd be freeing, man. I had a friend who was uh, from South Central, but he grew up Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there would be all these, like, pressures on, like, oh, it's the holidays, and you got to mm -hmm. tell it. And he was just Definitely. like, I don't know, bro. I'm just trying to. Back then, I was young. We were going out <laughs> yeah. and hanging. But he was like, I, it's Christmas? What? Like, we just kicking it. Like, yeah. he didn't have yeah. the pressure. But that was dope. Yeah. <clears throat> Did that, do you think that growing up Jehovah's Witness and practicing that, do you think it shaped your outlook on the world as it definitely as it pertains to because like I know you kind of somewhat subscribe to uh conspiracy theories a little bit, mm -hmm. especially with your mm -hmm. podcast, Truth Talks. Yeah, no, so yeah, well, well 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 I was that was um something me and my partner, we started doing the whole conspiracy thing. Mm -hmm. But then me being who I am, I was like, wait a minute. I want to know if this stuff is really true. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when I couldn't come to the final end of yes, it's true, I was like, bro, I'm not, I'm not pushing this no more because this is a whole bunch of he say, she say. To me, it's propaganda. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm sticking with what I, with, with truth, mm -hmm. and I believe truth is what God say. I'm, 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 I'm not rolling what man says. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I believe what God says is true. That's the final word. You know what I'm saying? And, any 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 playing man get it ain't gonna stand up anyway. So I don't 
I don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. Like for real. So segueing into that, just in terms of conspiracies, you made an interesting statement that I want to uh, just kind of see if you can elaborate on. You said that you, you, <clears throat> I know you had said somewhere, I think it was on your podcast that there was a big meeting, you know, mm -hmm. for the, with the record labels in yeah. terms of to, you know, and, and, and basically the record labels and the owners of the prisons are in cahoots. Mm -hmm. They're the same people. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you really believe that's a oh, thing? Yeah. Man, <clears throat> yes, it could be. There's a lot of big corporations that have ownership in prisons. It's, mm -hmm. it's rich yes. black people that got ownership in prisons. Right. They just don't go around bragging about it. That's, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. one big move they don't go around bragging about. Mm -hmm. You don't, bro, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's no secret, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like. So you feel as if basically the, they own the prisons and they're using the music to market, you know, basically you know, niggas to do what they do exactly. and get locked up. It has to, it has to be a reason why First of all, hip hop has been the dominant music yep. genre for decades. Now. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So knowing that this is knowing that this has, you know, the influence, the mm -hmm. influence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, that's 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 the music we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Hip hop became popular, and, and because you know what I'm saying. It was the main music, mm -hmm. bigger than country music. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> this is what we're going to, if this is what got the kids, that's what we yeah. want. Hollywood is a branch of the government, by the way. The CIA does fund movies as well. So it's not yeah. far-fetched to believe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like so, like, I mean, man, man it's, I mean, it, it's all control. Like, bro, like, we can go, that <laughs> particular yeah. episode right there yeah. is, <clears throat> Like to me, it's not so much conspiracy because it's like they do it in front of our face. Okay, mm -hmm. so it ain't even conspiracy. This is no, it's, this is what no, it is. No, yeah. no, we 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 see. Man, why 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 do every artist always complain? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How come every black buyout movie you see mm -hmm. starts good, ends bad? Right, right. <laughs> every last one of them. <laughs> right. Yep. Every last one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's crazy. Wow. Everybody got the same story. Yeah, you know? like yeah. it's 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 wild. So it's like that speaks for itself. With you being so deep in the game and being so accomplished, you know, being that you are part of a huge group and a huge artist. I mean, you, you know, you'll go down in history as one of the most accomplished rap groups. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever been approached by any weird shit in 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 the music industry or in terms of that, like them trying to get y'all to yeah say this, do that, you know, bro? The, uh, you know what I'm saying, like. What I tell people, you know what I'm saying, as far as music, I tell people this, you know what I'm saying, like, we didn't come out like like trying to glorify violence or none of that. We, we were led to believe this is your chance to tell your story. Right. They the ones with the cameras, they the ones glorified it. Mm -hmm. They the ones put it on TV and did this and did that, you know what I'm saying, put it in front of them like, you know what I'm saying? And we were fools because we played into it. You know what I'm saying? Like not knowing that it was they were they were gonna use it to right. to kind of entrap exactly. exactly. the yeah. people coming from right. you know like, like, right. you know what I'm saying? So so it is it's it's crazy though. It, it's yeah. like a lesson learned. But <laughs> it's crazy because it's like the lesson ain't being learned. <laughs> right, right. You know what? I think it's something to that too, bro. Cause if you go back to like our generation, mm -hmm. see, in our generation, we had balance. Mm -hmm. So we had NWA, we had the gangster shit, but then we also had X Clan. We had mm -hmm. Public Enemy, we had KRS KRS One. Exactly. Uh, even when you go to the females, you know, we mm -hmm. had Choice, mm -hmm. we had uh, uh, HWA, but then mm -hmm. we also had Queen Latifah. You had MC Light. Mm -hmm. Now exactly. it's all one way. All uh, one way. It's just bro. one way. So I think what you're saying is kind of we're seeing it, like you say, is right in our. In our man, yeah, it, it, man, it's crazy because it's kind of like okay, let's make all the dudes criminals mm -hmm. and all the women hoes, mm -hmm. right? Criminals are gay, but yeah, <laughs> it, you know, and it's and it's and it's crazy. It's like, and I seen something the other day. It's like, bro, bro, it, mm -hmm. it's it's just wild. Like just the just the agendas they pushing. Mm -hmm. It's like, like there 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 is more than one kind of. Uh, 
genre of hip hop within hip hop. Exactly. It's not just what you hear right. on the radio. That's right. It's talented young people that's very talented that's like kind of forced to change who they are mm -hmm. just to get into the just industry. Just to get in, yep. And then when they get into it, they got to stay that gotta way. got to stay that way. Yeah, because if you try to switch it up, yeah, you're done. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So it's, it's like everybody is being forced to sound, look, mm -hmm. act, talk, dress mm -hmm. the same. That's right. That's right. It's not a lot of uh, it's not a lot of variety. Yeah. It's a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it's not a lot of like you know like different styles. Yeah, it's it's you got to shuffle through the fun. It's some out there though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you got to shuffle through a lot. Yeah. See, in our day, you couldn't do that. You was biting. You know what I mean? Exactly. You was yeah. biting. Like That's you didn't want to sound was... like nobody, even if you were in the arena of somebody. Like okay, excuse me. Like if you go with y'all. But then you got Crucial Conflict, you got Do or Die, you had 3-6, but even still, mm -hmm. it's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you know what you're listening to, then you know it's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Twister is different from a bone. A bone is different from a tech nine. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, and, um, and, and, and man, like, again, you know what I'm saying? If that's what they want to do, mm -hmm. that's cool. Right. But why are they playing hip hop like that's the only form of hip hop it is. They don't do R&B like that. Mm -hmm. They don't do no other genre like that. Why are you just strictly so bent on this is all you want our young kids to hear? You know why. It's exactly. the influence. So that's why I say it's no conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, it's you. right in front of our face. Mm -hmm. It's right there. Mm -hmm. We just gotta look at it like for real. So, so segue and kind of coming from that. And, and again, I'm gonna put my fan hat on. So. What what were your musical uh, influences growing up? Man, man, just like all of them, man. Back in the eighties, well, well, what what made me get into hip hop was LL Cool J. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Um, Which album? Radio. Radio. Okay. Yeah, my brother came home one day with the uh, with the tape, and he, yeah, I was sitting on the couch. He was like, "You don't know nothing about this," and I was like, "Put it in the tape deck." Never took it out. Yeah. <laughs> Never took it out, man. And and, and I I, want, I wanted to learn. How to um, I wanted to learn the lyrics to the songs, mm -hmm. so I started writing the lyrics down. And as I was writing down his lyrics, I saw the blueprint on how to write a rhyme. Mm -hmm. So I wrote my own rhyme, and I never stopped from that day. Wow! Never stopped. You wow! Know what I'm like, so, so, so LL taught you song structure. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's definitely. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So, what's your favorite LL album? Just real quick. Man, it's man. You can only pick one. Man, that boy. There can man. only be one. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, um, man, that's a cold question. Right there, <laughs> that's a cold one, cause man, but, but but I have to say, radio for the simple fact, uh, um, the song like "You yeah. Rock," yeah, it's like that's what that's the song you used to have me hype. But I used to yeah. be in the mirror like performing that song <laughs> yeah. with my brother's can go on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> man, yeah, that uh, radio album had me going for real. Yeah, radio was hard, but Definitely. I had to go when I'm bad, bro. Yeah, I'm yeah. bad. Yeah. Oh my God, that yeah, album. Definitely. That that that. Could you do the, the whole the, the dance and everything? <laughs> with, when on, that, remember when that motherfucker would come on, oh, bro? Man. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because they wasn't playing music videos. Like you had to really real. catch that joint. You yeah. know. Yeah, Kuzé was hard though for yeah. real. <laughs> what was your um? What was your because you have a lot of um. I think me and you have a similar uh musical ear, and I think like a lot of your harmonies and a lot of the staccato and a lot of your your patterns, I hear a lot of old school R and B, mainly from the seventies and the eighties. So what 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 were your your inspirations or the ones you listened to from the eighties? Man, uh, well, the person that got me, you know, uh wanting to do music, period, e even before hip hop, was Michael Jackson. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I saw Michael Jackson <clears throat> perform uh, Motown, twenty five. The Motown special. Yeah, yeah. He did it with his brothers, and then after that, he did he the did Billy his Jean. Thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. When I saw him do Billy Jean, I, I, I looked at my mother. I was like, "Ma, I'm gonna do what he do." <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool." Yeah. I was like, "Watch, watch." Yeah. And I was there. See, I started yeah. to imitate Michael Jackson uh -huh. at a young age, and then my favorite group was New Edition. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I started mm -hmm. imitating. I got 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 my sisters and cousins. Yeah, we made a little group. We doing a little dance steps. You know what I'm so saying? So is this Candy Girl new edition? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Candy <Okay>. Girl, 
when they was like the New Jackson Five, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, so, so followed them and just man, all the old school greats. My mm -hmm. pops used to listen to, you know, the Isley Brothers, mm -hmm. and Teddy Pendergrass, and yeah, just right. like- Confunction, Cameo. Everybody, Barry White, yeah. Cameo, everybody, man, Confunction. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for yeah. Me, I love them, man, come on. Yeah, cause when I hear like, cause, cause I'm very knowledgeable uh, mm -hmm. uh, on your music and sometimes I catch little Riffs, yes, and I'm like, okay, I hear that. That's yes, that's Marvin. And he Gaye. let us know every time. All yeah, he play. He'll play y'all version, then play the original play the version, original. so we know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. All Just day. like a lot of people don't know from um, uh, uh, first of the month. First mm. of the month is Anita Baker. Yeah, yeah. I want to yeah. be your girl. Yeah, yeah. And but you you got to really have an ear to catch it though, because yeah. it's an interpolation of it. But it's a little pocket right there. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I always wanted to ask you that. So <clears throat> we already know, you know, you get with Easy E, y'all do your thing, and then you release um, "Creeping on a Come Up." Mm. Uh, I want to know because, especially because, uh, you know, we're close in age, and during that time, I was rapping and trying to come up too, mm -hmm. and with us kind of have having similar styles at that time. What was so I feel like, kind of vicariously. Uh, I, we, you know, the fan, I'm sure a lot of us feel like that. Like we was experiencing that with y'all, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like how you may feel like you grew up with LL and, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So what was some of your fondest memories, bro? Just from when y'all did Creeping on the Come Up? Man, just um, how quick, how he didn't waste no time. Mm -hmm. Like from the time like we met him in Cleveland, he was like, I'll be back off tour in a couple of days. He left us a couple of dollars, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? A couple of dollars to, to, to get back with a Greyhound. And um, <clears throat> maybe we went out there, we got, they, they put us up in the hotel. He got there like like two days later, he came straight to the mm -hmm. hotel, came and dropped us some weed off. <laughs> and he was just like, um, yeah, I'm gonna come back and, and uh, we, we, gonna, we, we going, to, uh, going to the studio tomorrow. But we was like, E. We can't go nowhere looking like this. We look like fucking bums. <laughs> we need some clothes or something, yeah. for real. Like so, he took us to like the little, uh, the little surplus. Uh -huh. Got us some dickies and some yeah, some khakis and yeah, shit. Ben Davis and all that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. and, and then he took us to the studio, and I think the first spot we went to was, um, I think it was Rhythm D. Shout out to Rhythm D. We had him on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that's the first one. When, uh, and I think I, I think we did down for my thing was the first song we, we, we recorded, <laughs> and I remember like it coming out like, like sounding so crazy, bro. We was hyped. Yeah, and it was crazy because 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 the flow was, and the and the beat was kind of like on some East Coast shit, mm -hmm. but it had mm -hmm. like, like a little West Coast flavor to right. it too. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like it was dope. But um, so then after that, like the next day, he took us to um, I think it was uh, Yella. Mm -hmm. we, we went to Dirt Bike Studios out in Torrance mm -hmm. with Donovan. And man, we went out there and um, Yella put this beat on. And uh, I think it was an easy beat, but easy was like, play it for them, play it for them. I want to hear what you know. So we played on, man, man, that shit came on like, for the love of, man, we was like, oh, done, right, <laughs> let's go. All we had to hear was for the love of money. Yeah. Like, and we was like, oh yeah, we done. Came up with the hook, like bam, and then like wrote the, Mm -hmm. Wrote the verses, knocked that out. So now we had two songs. Mm -hmm. So then, like the third or fourth day, he took us to um, he took us to DJ Unique and Kitty McLeod. Shout out to Kenny. That's the home. Down in uh, you know mm -hmm. at the uh, studio was Black Hole of Watts. Black Hole, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah not Black Hole of Watts. That's that was the group, but uh, Black His Hole studio Studios. Was Black Hole, yeah. Yeah, but so we go down there, and when we meet um, DJ Unique. You know, like we talked to him for a minute. He like, so what y'all, what y'all, what, what kind of beats y'all like? So we started humming to him, like humming to him, like, cause we already had like a lot of stuff on our head already. Mm -hmm. Like, so we started humming to him, like the sound we wanted. And he was like, okay. And so we went outside and we, we were smoking or something. Mm -hmm. Came back, this nigga had the whole Douglas uh, uh no, 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 the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the creeping on the come up beat. Mm -hmm. We, Cause man, we all all we did was hum it to him. We came back, dude had the whole beat. We was like, bro, this shit sound crazy. Which beat is that? 
Which creeping on the cone? Which uh, uh, that uh, the stuck in cat fools? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Man, yeah, that and and then like we went in there, and then when we laid that hook, that was the first time Easy had really like heard us sing. He was uh -huh. in there like eyes wide open, like <laughs> he's like, man, y'all niggas sound like a fucking pop group or some <laughs> shit. He was like, that shit sound crazy. Yeah, like gone. He was yeah. like. Oh, I'm about to make some money with Tony. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he knew what he had. He was like, mm -hmm. and then like, but 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 after we um like went to Unique, the vibe was just like so strong because yeah. like everything we hummed to, we came back exactly how we wanted it. So mm -hmm. we never went nowhere else after that. Mm -hmm. We was wow. like, yo, he know the sound. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we stand right here. You know oh, that's saying? yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. with DJ Unique and Rhythm D. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's the chemistry right there. Definitely. That's Definitely. the so what what inspired that song that that stuck in God food? Who came up with that? Man, it was uh, man, it was just a um, I think uh, Busy mm -hmm. came up with the actual hook. Mm -hmm. The stuck in God food. And like, and then like, by all of us just singing it, mm -hmm. just made it sound crazy. I was even like in the studio, like, man, that sounds crazy. Like, <laughs> because this was the first time we was in there, like a real, real yeah, studio. Yeah, real studio. So I'm like, yo, this yeah. is amazing. I'm like, <laughs> man. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like we did the um, hook, and we was like, uh, let's just all write stories about you know, mm -hmm. like coming up, like mm -hmm. coming up. You know what I'm saying? So, I wrote one about robbing a bank. You know. Yeah. They robbed a jury stolen B. <laughs> yeah, Jamaican. that song was hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That song was had hard. Had there been had there been a reference at that point when you guys sang that? And you're like, a, you know, I won't say hardcore, but you're like a rap group, but you sang and harmonized mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of early rap and mm -hmm. references to like that that type of harmony. It was or is that truly just y'all were doing that and that was your thing? I mean, man, I, man, we didn't we didn't we didn't even realize we was doing it at first. That whole thing came about, like the harmony came about, cause like we was always together, like always, mm. like we mm. never went nowhere without, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. and if we did, it was always two of us, mm -hmm. like never went, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so like, and and and, and we was always rapping together. Like we'd be walking down the street, just rapping, like, like saying our rhymes and we knew each other's rhymes so well, like we would all ad lib mm. at the same time, the same words and it sounded like we was harmonizing. Wow. And like that just, <laughs> and, and when people would hear us rap, they was like, man, y'all niggas sound like the rapping Temptations or some <laughs> shit. Like, and, and, and that's what people used to tell us in the hood. They was like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all sound like some, like the rapping Temptations or yeah. something. <laughs> and then like, so that's how the whole style, it just gradually came about. We, yeah. like, we wasn't trying to do it. We was just, it's just man, like. Just God. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, then nah, that's dope, that's dope. Um. Yeah, now it's funny you brought that up because that was one of my favorite songs on there. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that man, that went in down for my thing, but that that whole little EP was dope as shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so y'all had it stardom, you know that shit blows the fuck up, right? Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> after that, after you finish um, creeping on the come up, do y'all start go right into East Ninety Nine? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. E Easy wanted us back. Cause, mm -hmm. cause we was in Cleveland enjoying the moment. He yeah. was like, "Man, uh -uh, I need y'all, I need y'all niggas to get back here before something happened. Y'all right. get into trouble. Yep. Let's start on the album. Yeah. So we went back. You know, we went back to um, came back here, cause we was in Cleveland, and um, and man went to work. Mm -hmm. Went to work on the album. Y'all creative process is so. I know early on, like you said, y'all never went anywhere, you know, without each other. So in the studio, y'all all are in the studio together for that creative process. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you come up with something, and I know it may be in later years it got like that, but early on, it's not like you come up with something, then they come in and people just piece in, you know, fill in their spots, mm -hmm. like y'all collectively come up with everything. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we I mean, we all be in the studio, but mm -hmm. I might come up with the hook. Yeah. And then I'll be like, okay, I got something, I'm going in. Yeah. Or or we might come out like busy microphone or something. I got something for the hook. I'm going in. Yeah, and that's what everybody go off of. Like, okay. Whenever the hook get laid down, or somebody may have a verse first. Yeah. And then like the hooks get laid, pertaining to whatever the first verse. Yeah. But y'all, but y'all there together. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. Each other's energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when y'all do East ninety nine, did you know you had a hit with first of the month when you heard it? Man, we didn't know we had a hit with none of it. We, really. 
We was just making the music though. We was just in there. We just knew it sounded dope. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, um, like honestly, we wasn't even thinking like, but we I don't even think we even realized, you know what I'm saying, like the 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 success that we had mm -hmm. had off mm -hmm. the EP. Wow. At the time. Like we were still like kicking it like we were some normal niggas, yeah. like just walking around <laughs> yeah. in the hood. Still looking grimy, yeah, grimy, because yeah. we, you know, we, we ain't made, yeah, no, made money no money yet. yet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We yeah. still looking grimy, dude. You know what I'm saying. Got the whole hood <laughs> with us, just you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's just, um, we wasn't even tripping off that. We just made the music, and we know now we got an album coming out. Mm -hmm. And like we wasn't tripping because we hadn't got no money yet. So mm -hmm. like we just like okay, we got some, we got some new music coming out. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until after that album dropped, yeah. that's when we like realized, okay, mm -hmm. oh shit, we the shit right now. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Yeah, that was, you know, for the youngsters just watching and listening, you had to be there to really understand the magnitude of the Bone Thugs and Harmony explosion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was, I guess I have to well, liken it to the Migos, you know, or, yeah. or one of their favorite groups, which it ain't many groups now, but, you know, mm -hmm. the ones in recent years, it was it was like that, you yeah. know what I mean, to get the gravity of it. Um, but as you're riding this train of success and I mean, your dreams are coming to fruition and all of that easy dies. Yeah. So I just want to ask personally, how did that affect you? Man, it was crazy, man. I, Cause um, I just remember like stuff at the end getting like real, you know what I'm saying? Like before he died, it, it getting like real strange. <clears throat> like in the middle of us doing the, uh, that album, he stopped coming around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, and, and and this was like almost like when we had, like we had done like maybe five six songs to the album, and he was supposed to be on Mr. Bill Collector. Mm -hmm. He had a verse for Mr. Bill Collector and everything, mm -hmm. but he never got a chance to lay it down mm -hmm. because like he stopped coming to the studio, and nobody would tell us like where he was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was um, we was like it was it was it was just real strange, and then. We um we got a call to go up to the office one day. And it was, you know, it was an attorney up there named Ron Sweeney. Mm -hmm. He was up there and you know, he they, you know, like these people was talking to us. Like we ain't never seen these people before in our life, and they talking to us like, yeah, you know, this is what's gonna happen. Da, 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 da. We like, man, who the fuck these people is? Like, mm -hmm. well, we, 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 we ain't even seen Tamika at this point. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, so it's like we like. And they got they got checks for us. Mm. I think the checks was like 100, 150,000 or something like that. Back, you know a piece saying? or for all of y'all? No, a piece. Okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? So we like, you know what I'm saying? They like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we gonna um, da 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 da. And then you know, I'm like, it was it was just strange. So like, we was we was hesitant. I don't, I don't even think we took the checks then. I think mm. we, I, I, I think we took them later, but like mm -hmm. we was just confused as to what was going on. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, when that when 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 we when we did get the little advance money, uh, we moved back to Cleveland, mm -hmm. not knowing. Still ain't heard nothing from Easy mm -hmm. since the time we had was doing the album. Finished the album. Now we going back to Cleveland. Now you know what I'm saying. So um, I come back. I get back to Cleveland. I, I I done set up. I done got like a little spot to live here. I done get all this time. Mm -hmm. We ain't we ain't heard nothing from like we the the label ain't telling us nothing. We in Cleveland just you know like we we selling ourselves. You know what I'm saying. And this is after East Ninety Nine. Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Okay. After we recorded it, after it hadn't recorded came out yet. Okay. So um, I'm sitting at home one. No, 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 no. The um, the person I was with at the time, she was like, she asked me when I I came home from the studio. She asked me. She was like, um, you heard anything about Easy E being in the hospital? I was like, no. Why? She was like, my friend just told me they, it's a rumor here in the hospital with AIDS. I was like, what? I was like, no, I ain't heard no shit like that. No, no, no. Mm. So like a few days, like like I think like two days went by. I'm sitting up watching TV on MTV News, bro. The shit comes on the news. Kurt on, Loader. Yeah, on mm -hmm. MTV News. I'm like, I'm like, son, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like phone get to blowing up, everybody calling me. I'm like, this is crazy. So that's how we, that's how we basically found out, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, 
And it was just crazy. So after that, you know, uh, after everything was said and done, we get a call. We get a call to the, first of all, we hear that everybody on the roof let's get dropped. Everybody Including was- Including y'all? No. Okay. No, we the only ones. Okay, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like that we know of, like, okay. you know what I'm saying? So we heard they drop everybody but us. Okay. And we get this meeting called in. We go to the office and you know, it's, uh, it's Tamika, it's that attorney, Ron Sweeney. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, I can just remember the meeting really not going that good because it, it, it was real tense. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew who, really who Tamika was. We was real young, biased, mm -hmm. like, you know, where's E, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, type of thing. And it was like, it was just. Y'all had never come into contact with Tamika? Y'all didn't know who I she mean, was? I mean, we had, um, Easy had took us to his house one time we had for, for, for like a little cookout. Okay. And we had met her then, but that's okay. the only time we had saw. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. What, where was Jerry Heller in, in that? Um, man, we don't, um, I don't know what Jerry was like. Mm -hmm. I was in Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? So okay. I don't know like where, you know what I'm saying, where they were and none of that. So, so y'all elected to stay with Ruthless, but is that where y'all dissension with Ruthless started after E, where you kind of issues with Tamika started? I mean, we elected to stay, I mean, we ain't had no choice. They had no choice. Yeah. They wasn't letting us go. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, we was, you know, you got to think about like where we was coming from. We we had <clears> just <throat> got on mm -hmm. with our mentor, with, right. with, with one of our hip hop mentors, wasn't even with him for a full year mm -hmm. and he dies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, And we like, oh man, we done made it and fell off that quick. Damn. And yeah. we like, damn, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, so so when they called us in, was like, yeah, you know, we want to keep y'all, put the album out, da 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 get y'all such and such. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's when the yeah. money start, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? They want to, you know what I'm saying? They start giving us money and, you know, it yeah. was, um, the deals were sweet, you know what I'm saying? And like, we was like, okay, we're going to try to make it work, represent for Easy e We're going to be the right. one representing Ruthless. You know what I'm saying, and it's <clears throat> and just rocking. But you know, as time went on, the relationship, yes, just got rocky. Where, you know where? So, where do you think it took a turn with Tamika and Ruthless? Where did it start taking that turn where it wasn't right? Where y'all felt, or you felt? Let me let me let me let you speak for yourself. Where you felt it wasn't right? Man, I think it was. I think it was on both ends. Mm -hmm. Us being young at the time, bias. Mm -hmm. Like, who was this? Who was this bro? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Tell yeah. us what to do. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So y'all just wasn't respecting <laughs> her in that position. No, I mean, <laughs> not, not, man, because you got like somebody you never met before coming yeah. in, like, okay, this is what's going on. Da, da, da. We like, okay. But then, you know, after a while, you know what I'm saying? Like, like we was working, mm -hmm. everything was cool, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you know, like when you're dealing with so many different personalities, personalities and yeah. this person, that, and that, you know what I'm saying? It's so, just, let me ask you this. Do you think that, cause I know up until this point, y'all brothers and there's no business, right? Y'all just niggas yeah. trying to get on and trying to survive. Mm. But now you're professional artists, you know, and now you have contracts, you have expectations, you have all obligations, all these things. But like you said, you got five different personalities thinking different things, wanting to do different things. Yeah. Is this kind of where maybe some cracks started to form in the group in terms of we get the brotherhood, but now business-wise, it's Bone Thugs and Harmony. Is that where some of the cracks you think started? Yeah, the business for the sure. The business, yeah. Yeah, because the music and all that stuff, like we never had, pro I mean, as far as like creative ideas and mm -hmm. stuff, like what we gonna do in the studio and how we gonna sound, what we gonna, we never had a problem right. with that. We, we we always in unison with that, mm -hmm. feed off each other, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, as far as like the business and which, you know what I'm saying, that's always gonna be a problem when you got mm -hmm. five dudes in the group somebody ain't gonna want to do something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's like and that's when you run it that's 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 the that's the uh what you get for being when when you're when you're in the group like you come for sure you come into these situations and it's all about how you deal with them you know what I'm saying? so b was the first i think to to launch the missile and and really just kind of be like i ain't feeling none of this shit because that's what he did when he put out heaven's movie and he did with the thugs cry. That was pretty much him taking aim at Ruthless mm -hmm. uh, and Tamika. 
what was your feelings with that? Was you on the same page with him or was you kind of like, uh, you kind of tripping? Oh. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was hard at the time for me to understand anything that Busy was talking about because it was like, you was barely around. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand none of your gripes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like you would come here when it would benefit, but then you'd be gone. So I didn't really understand like none of his gripes and like we didn't we didn't we didn't really feed into it like that mm. to to even like so I didn't look at it like it was all that serious. Like I didn't even look at that album like he was really, you know what I'm saying, geared towards them. He probably was saying some stuff like that was definitely towards them, you know what I'm saying? But but um, you know what I'm saying, I I never really got involved with that, bro, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean I even said some slick stuff and you know what I'm saying, like mm. uh about him in mind too, you know what I'm saying? Like so yeah. I didn't really like pay attention or get mad if he, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I wasn't tripping about it at all. So with all that going on with Bone being tied up with Ruthless and you know, things are, are happening, is that what made y'all go ahead and move forward with forming Motha up and say, fuck it, we gonna get our own movement. We gonna have our own artists. We gonna break our own shit. We gonna run our own business. I mean, no, no we, 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 we already had, like before we even got on, mm -hmm. met E, we had, we we knew what our, what the what the name of our label was gonna be. Mm -hmm. We had the people we was gonna come back for. Mm -hmm. We knew it was gonna be Mo Thugs Records. Okay. We uh, we 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 had a pack with the artists. Whoever get on first, we gonna come back and get you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we did. You know what I'm saying? Because we had a pack with them, so we went back and got them. And like we knew we was gonna start a record label, and we knew we was gonna do solo albums and all that. Okay. So with Mo Thug, was it always? supposed to be where more or less you and Lay kind of spearheading that and being at the forefront in terms of on the business side? Uh, no, no, uh -huh. no, it wasn't. It was supposed to be <clears throat> Bones label. Oh, everybody. Yeah, okay. yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be Bones label. It didn't Bones seem up. like that from the outside oh, no, no, looking no, in. No, 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 like that's that. why I said it was supposed to be. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying, yeah, but, yeah. but but it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Busy wasn't really involved, Wish uh -huh. wasn't really involved, Flesh was, you know, like. Yeah, going through this thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. Flesh was doing this thing. So me and Lay was really the ones who was like mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So on their first uh, Motha, Family Scripture goes platinum, double platinum. What, yeah. What, double platinum. Yeah. Um, the hit off of there was Thug Devotion. <laughs> um, who who whose concept was that? Something that the, the producer came up with to flip that record, or was that something y'all came up with? No, man, that that was like a uh, that was like a twelfth round <laughs> miracle, really. Because we sit in the studio, like because the album is done. Okay. So we sitting in the studio, listening, you know, mm -hmm. listening to all the songs. Like, man, what's gonna be the first single? Yeah. Like. I don't think we got a single. And then my dude, I think uh, uh, my dude Bobby Jones, he played the beat. And everybody was like, hey, that's a classic, that's mm -hmm. a smash. Yeah. And then, you know, I immediately heard, you know, like heard the harmonies mm -hmm. and like went in and laid stuff mm -hmm. down. And the artist that was there was the artist I used. Like, I said, okay, you gonna be on the song? You gonna, mm -hmm. you gonna be go put a verse down, you know what okay. I'm saying? And we did that on the spot and it was like, that's the single. And so that was too true. Or yeah. was it Trey? Two true? Trey. Trey. It was Trey, it was Trey, uh, Trey, Soldier Kendall, Boy, and Kendall. Soldier Boy. Okay. And Lay. Yeah. Yep. And Lay. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And that was a uh that was like a number one single too. Right? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Did y'all expect for that to do that? Man, not bro. <laughs> no. Not at all, man. Yeah. I didn't I didn't do I didn't expect Ghetto Cowboy to do what it did, bro. Oh, we're gonna get to Ghetto Cowboy. Bro. So <laughs> it was but, crazy. But this is what I want to do. So Mo Murder, the yeah. first one on mm -hmm. Family Scriptures. Oh yeah. Uh, moments in love, yeah. Um, art of noise, yeah. Is that something that you wanted to do, or producer just put the beat there? No, I've been, man, I've been writing rap, no lie. I've been writing rhymes to that beat back, <laughs> since, like, like since I was in high school. Uh -huh. you know? The first one I wrote to that, the, the, the first rhyme I wrote to it was a rhyme called uh, Gangster Street, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> back in like, back when I, no, 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 I was in like, yeah, your yeah, high school. It was a song called Gang Street, and I used. I just always loved that beat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I um got into the studio and was like getting ready to go into, you know what I'm saying, like the um mm -hmm. Thug Mentality, that version that was on Thug Mentality, I did that version to that, but then uh 
a DJ in Cleveland gave me the version to the other one. I was like, man, I didn't know that it was so many versions to yeah. this song. Because mm-hmm. the like, song is like nine minutes long. Yeah. So it's yes. different sections of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm like, oh, I'm about to go in on this one and <laughs> flip the title. That's right. Bro, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it, it, it was crazy. Like, so I always love that beat, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. So what type of weed was you smoking and how high were you <laughs> to come up with those fucking chants? Cause them chants is crazy. Man. Like even the start of the kill him up, kill him up, kill him yeah, up, they man. die. Like man, I what? don't even know, bro. I, that that's just what I heard. Like when I heard the beat, you know what I'm saying? It was just like because crazy. Because niggas rappers wasn't doing that shit. Like oh, no. you was literally doing chants, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Mixed definitely. with rapping and and, and then, you know, I'm hearing it. My nigga, like you doing two and three part harmonies too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. what mm-hmm. how how did you develop that? Like to do that lower octave, that higher octave, you know, what said, you know what, I'm gonna do these different octaves with that. Bro, j- just just like constantly like um like listening to what I do, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause every time I go back and like, this is why I don't like listening to like, once my music come out, mm-hmm. I don't like going back listening to it. Cause I always be like, damn, I should have said yeah. it like mm-hmm. this. Yeah, I could have <laughs> added this, it was something yeah. way better. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. so that's what made me for the next, the next time I'm like, okay, yeah, I could do that for the next time. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, so that's how I learned, like just to like how to do the different harmonies mm-hmm. just by hearing something I left out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the next time I go back when I'm doing something like that, like, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how I correct it. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. that, that Mo Murder, it's an infectious. I just put my youngest daughter up on it. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she She's up on it. I mean, it's yeah. a, that's a crazy song. And, and the funny thing is, I have a, for those of, that, that are my fans, I have a version of it too. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? I got two that's versions dope. that are similar to it. <laughs> you know, no. so we on some, <laughs> some McDowell's, McDonald's shit, but it's all good, right? Oh, so, good. um, <laughs> I know well, you, you're, the, you're the six ball member. So. <laughs> Fucking right. Busy shit. Yeah. 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 So, but no, um, Copy, so. Copycat bone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, cause I always wondered with that song, like I would listen to it, like how the fuck, what made him say that shit or come mm. with that? And what is the the other little, the congos in there, that little percussion? Tell do me, you do want you want to, want to come, come and yeah, play with yeah. me? Like what was that? Bro, I don't know, bro. That cause that's not in Moments of Love. <laughs> no, no. That, that, that was something else. No, that's why I was like, it, 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 was, it was a different version. I was uh-huh. like, yo, it's crazy. <laughs> it's hypnotic. Yeah, I told you and we then, gonna get into the music. And then, and, and then we even used a version of it on Faces of Death on the song Hell Sing. Really? Yeah. Oh wow! I the didn't, song I didn't Hell, catch that one, bro. The song Hell, the, the part where the beat break down. I that's the whole that. beat on Hell Sing. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, that's that same beat. Okay. So, so we done stole they beat plenty of times. <laughs> they know so who y'all done paid them. Oh y'all, yeah, y'all, oh yeah. They, they know who with y'all. Man, they like, oh yeah. <laughs> We love to see their name come across the publishing table. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so y'all got that. So, what was was it a hard transition? You coming from being in a group, being an artist, and then dealing with the bureaucracy that goes with running a label to now you running a label, Mo Thug, dealing with relativity, and now you have all these personalities to manage. So now you got uh, who'd you have? You had a uh, graveyard yeah. shift. You got yeah. Soldier Boy. You got. Trey, Too True, Ken Dog, you mm-hmm. know, you have all, cause y'all had like a hundred motherfuckers with y'all, you know, yeah, so yeah, definitely. so now how difficult was that for you to, to handle yeah. that? I mean, man, it's a lot of work when you're trying to do that, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and, and in the, in the, in the middle of your career, take, cause yeah. like we started Mo Thug early. Mm-hmm. We started Mo Thug like when we was mm-hmm. like still like, yeah, take it off, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was hectic, like, you know, like trying to mm-hmm. manage our own and and mm-hmm. the artists we had as well. Mm-hmm. It was always an entourage. It was always, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, you know how that story goes. So that did was, you, yeah, I was finna say, did you have to deal world. with, um, you know, the, the, the artists complaining and all of that shit? Cause now you're able to see it from a different side. You, yeah. You're the artist might have some gripes with Ruthless, but now you got artists looking at you to provide for them. Yeah, I mean, not at the time, mm-hmm. nobody mm-hmm. complained. Yeah. Cause everybody, you know what I'm saying? At the time, it was like later on when, you know, mm-hmm. the uh, things weren't working out so yeah. well no more. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. we'll so, get to that. Yeah. So, so now y'all had that one. It's double platinum. Then you hit them with another blow with the Mo Thug Family Scriptures too. Mm, yeah. 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 Dope ass album. Um. So now you have uh, the hit 
uh, It's All Good. Yeah. You know, which is one of my favorite songs. Definitely. And then you had, uh, what was the other single on there? Oh, Ghetto Cowboy. Ghetto mm -hmm. Cowboy. Okay, my question, where'd you find a white boy? Where the hell did Potter P come from? Bro, Potter <laughs> P, bro. But the story is crazy with Potter P, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at my house in Cleveland. I'm out, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, I got a house, like, I done bought a house like out in the suburbs in Cleveland. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I'm at the house, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and the person I was with, like we 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 hear some banging on the door, and and the girl I was with at the time got up and went to the door, and uh, this dude was at the door, <laughs> and she came back in. She was like, "Yo, there's some white boy at the door. That's some crazy boy. This is some bullshit. I ain't gonna be having it." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, what?" And so I got up and went to the door, and this dude out here, this dude was like, man, what's up, man? I'm a, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a big fan, and mm -hmm. this and that. <clears throat> He's telling me, like, his birthday is the same day as Tupac. <laughs> 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 He's saying, like, he a, he a Tupac fan. And um, I'm like, so, I'm, so, so, so the whole time he talking to me, like, I don't know why I wasn't mad, you know right. what I'm saying? Because I'm like, this You didn't it. think like, why, I'm like, how'd you find me? Like, man, before yeah, the internet. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, this little <laughs> right. dude, I'm like, this little dude is like, <laughs> got the nuts enough to come to my house and like sitting here explain his story. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like, so I'm listening and I said, all right, let me hear you rap. And then he like, he busted a little lyrics for me. I, I was like, okay, yeah, I want to hear you on the beat. So I got his number. I was yeah. like, let me get your number. You tell him never to come back to the house. Yeah, again. I say, bro, <laughs> but you can't pop up at my house like this no more, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, how'd you get? How how'd you find out where I live? And he was know. like, so I forgot what he said. Like, he was out there. He was staying with some lawyer that got him out of trouble mm -hmm. when he was a minor or something. And like, I don't know how this dude knew I lived in the neighborhood. Yeah. I guess everybody knew I lived yeah. in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? But I just, you know what I'm saying? So, um. <clears throat> He just got the nerd to come down to the house and like <laughs> knock on the door. I'm like, this I'm like, this little dude is crazy. Yeah. Anyway, I took him to the studio like like three days later and put him on the beat. And he sounded cool on the beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so I started rocking with him. I gave him a job. He was he was um had him working at the office. Mm -hmm. He was he was actually would open up the Mo Thug office every morning. Wow. <clears throat> you see, okay. like, Oh, y'all yeah. had an office and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bro, bro. Y'all was doing business, business. Bro, full <laughs> face office and everything. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Def oh, so y'all had budgets. Budgets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> so so now Ghetto Cowboy is another hit, right? Um, oh, yeah. So um, with, with it's all good. Now, I want to ask your take on this because I had your brother Lazy on. Mm -hmm. And Lay, he said that... Um, I believe he said All Good was not supposed to be the first single. It was supposed to be uh, Mighty Mo Thug. Was, um, was that supposed to be the first single? I I I don't re I don't remember <clears throat> that. I don't remember. You know what I'm okay. saying? I don't know. It it, it could have been, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I, all I remember is the label saying mm -hmm. that they wanted um All Good. All Good, yeah. Because here's the thing with um All Good. <clears throat> That wasn't the original version of All Good. All Good was originally a love ballad. Mm -hmm. It was a slow song. Really? Man, man, I and, man, I still got the version of the song. It's crazy. <laughs> you like, gonna put it out? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. But but <clears throat> it's a slow, it was it was a love ballad, like mm -hmm. a real love song, like Wow. And you was rapping on it. Yeah. Okay. Did the rap on it and everything. Mm -hmm. But my dude Disco Rick from from Miami, mm -hmm. we left the studio. And, and uh, I came back to the studio the next day, he was like, man, listen to this shit, what I done done to this beat. Mm -hmm. He played the beat and that shit came on like, boom. Mo. Yeah. I was like, nigga, what the? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, this shit is yeah. crazy. Man, yeah. man, Cause in the studio, it was like beat. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, son, this is crazy. So then we played it for the label. Uh -huh. And it was like, this is the single. This is the single, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and it was like they, they, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's the one they 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 wanted that to be the single. Okay, did you <clears throat> did you already put Felicia on there, or how did she come about getting on the record? Yep, yeah, no, it was her song. It was her song. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, she okay. recorded the song. Yeah, yeah that she she came. So she there. came to Mo Thug with that song already. No, no, no she. Came, I don't. I don't know. I think. I think she wrote the song okay. while she was there. Okay. But she wrote it to the. You know what I'm saying? Like she yeah. wrote the song and like she laid the song yeah. down. And like I said, it was a slow song because I heard it. I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah, because I even wrote my. Ryan, I'm like, man, how this nigga make this sound like it's fast now? It was, it was crazy. Though, nah, it was real dope. shit, real shit. Nah, that's a dope ass song. Yeah. What was funny was that video. Where where did y'all shoot that video at? Miami, My, man, hot ass Miami. Miami, you had man. on a starter coat and everything. It, man, I don't know what I was thinking though. Like for real, <laughs> son. You see, that, that, man, bro. That's... So I want to ask you too, nigga, because I knew you shot it in Miami. And what I want to ask is, how did your and hair, how did your boots. perm keep from puffing? Because your shit was like straight, straight. And I was like, boy, nigga, I was on the, the beach in Timberland boots. Nigga. <laughs> you was tripping. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck out for real. How'd you crazy. keep your hair from puffing up? Like your perm man. was just laid down, like. Man, had a, uh, man, you know, we, we had a, we, we, we kept our homegirl on this. Okay. On, on deck. April <laughs> she had Love. To on. April Love. We kept her on deck, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, yeah. it was really funny to see. It was a dope ass song. Um, but it was funny to see you and Wish or just see Bone going in that direction, you know, because yeah. artistically everything had always been so hood, you know, yeah. and here you kind of got this kind of, Puppy love song, but it was it was a dope ass song. Yeah, yeah. And I remember tripping watching the video, like, damn, this nigga cray hot. When you look at it, do you realize how high you was? Because when you looked in the camera, my nigga, like your Bro. eyes was like slit. She was Bro. like, I remember my grandmama was like, <laughs> she was like, boy, what's wrong with your eyes? I was like, Grandma, I was tired. <laughs> we was up all night shooting that day. Well, your eyelids was a hundred. Your, your eyelids was a hundred pounds, bro. bro. Done, bro. They, you was done. like, and I, I laughed. I was like, boy, this nigga high as hell. And then I'm looking at Wish, like this hood ass nigga trying to back there rock. Bro, and I'm like, bro, 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 I, bro, that shit kills me, bro. I laugh at this every time I see that video. That boy was back there giggling. Yeah, yeah, you see, it. bro, had a serious groove on. I'm like, that boy was grooving for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I just <laughs> fuck with the starter coat on. <laughs> I don't know what we was thinking. Nah, really. that was a dope ass video though. That yeah, was dope, yeah. That, that whole time was was. But dope. I'm glad I'm glad we came out with something like that that early mm -hmm. because I never wanted to get put in the box anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted I I never wanted to think for people to think we just do this. So we mm -hmm. do that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a lot we could do. Stupid people still ain't seen. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So it's like there's no limit to like. Two artists. Yeah, right. that's right. That's right. Definitely. Um. So now with this second success, which that album went platinum as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. you got a platinum album, a double platinum album. This is on <clears throat> under the label, and now y'all put out. Uh, uh, was it Graveyard Shift? Um. Uh. Yes. No. It was. It was uh, uh, what was too that? true in um poetic um, hustlers. Poetic hustlers. Yeah. Right. Right. Um. <clears throat> how How did their albums do? I I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't believe they done that well. Okay. Yeah. What do you think that was due to? Just maybe marketing? Or... Well, um, with Choo Choo, yeah, definitely marketing. Mm -hmm. With uh, Poetic Hustlers, I think, um, you know, I'm going to keep 100 because like a lot of artists that we had, they really didn't start rapping until we- Until you got a situation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, Dudes that's right. was doing, like, like a lot of them was doing other stuff and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's what they started doing. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. had they developed and stayed together, maybe, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, I think they would have been, you know what I'm saying, they could have been dope, but like, mm -hmm. I think, you know, like, I think Graveyard Shift had, you know what I'm saying, had, had potential, potential, but then my, yeah. you know, but, but, but then my brother-in-law, Tombstone, Tombstone was murdered. Yeah, rest in you peace. You know what I'm saying, and then um, another member, Gates, you know, he, he, he actually is a Jehovah's Witness. He started doing this, you know, he mm -hmm. started doing that. And um, seeing, you know, he just, you know, I, I don't think he's doing music no more. So, mm -hmm. you know, and and Soldier Boy definitely had talent. Man, you know Soldier, Soldier Boy, Boy was, was a beast. That yeah. was my next question. So, why did y'all not lean into Soldier Boy? Why, why you didn't? Bro, really... honestly, like after I um after I departed from Motha, I really don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like what happened with that? Mm, you know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, you know what I'm saying? It was, you know what I'm saying? I guess like people was on, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Certain yeah. sides and it was just like, yeah, it was what it was. So when you say certain sides, what do you mean? You know, I mean, when I went to, when I started TL, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, okay. 
So was, yeah. so that's that was my next question. So we had Leon mm -hmm. uh, here just a few weeks ago. So respectfully, I want to ask you because he said it. So mm -hmm. I just want to get your take on it, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Lay said that y'all did Mo Thug or whatever. Um, he felt like maybe he was pushed out of Mo Thug a little bit around that. And, and I'm I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. um, he was kind of pushed out that second Mo Thug in terms of the business and with the decisions being made. So he said he fell back and kind of let you do it, right? Mm -hmm. But he said that the rumor or hearsay is that you basically went to Relativity and told them this Mo Thug shit is done. You know what I mean? Lay is fucking up. He's not handling business. And this shit is over with. And they were like, no, Cray, it's still got legs. Here, you do it. You take the budget and go run with the ball. The myth, the legend is, the, the rumor is, whatever it is, is that he went up there and told them people that I was a drunk, Mo Thug was dead, and it should be buried. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm. he wasn't do it. So they was like, boom, well, we got it. This brand is alive. So they gave it to him. Mm. And that's when, that's when you see him basically push out front. And I just fell back. No. That is, that's definitely not what happened. So, I mean, true. <clears throat> okay, so so me and Lay was the ones running more Thug Records. The deal that we had, since nobody else was a part, the deal that we had, I couldn't sign nothing, no checks, no contracts or nothing, unless Lay signature was there too. Mm. He couldn't sign nothing, no checks, contracts or nothing, unless my signature was there. Now, I heard Lay admit that he had, you know, he mm. was wild yeah. with the drinking. Yep. Everybody knows that. that. Yep. When he would go on his little binges, mm. Business still has to get done. Mm -hmm. You can't disappear for like two or three weeks. I understand you a celebrity superstar. That's what that's what they do. But we also have a business as well. So who's going to take care of it? And what you never hear, who the artist going to look to when they need stuff. When studio bills and stuff need to get paid, who was there to write the check? So yeah, in order for business to get done, we had to start making moves going over his head because the label is like, where's the music? What's going on? How come we ain't got this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they giving us money. So I'm like, yo, we got to keep moving this ship along. We got to, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna keep this moving. We ain't got, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not out partying and doing that. So mm -hmm. that's what all that was, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know if he remember that, you know what I'm saying? But it was never, he always had access to the budget, even when he was on his binges. Mm. He never, he, 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 he never even, he never took money out of there. Oh, damn. Never. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, the money was for, we, we, we used all that money for mm -hmm. Mo Thug. Yeah. I mean, he wrote certain artist checks, you know what I'm saying? Right. When they, you know what I'm right. saying? When they wanted money, we gave money, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, he really took money out of there, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he had access to it. Oh wow! But he was off doing his own thing. He had his own money. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like he was doing his own thing. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but Motel still had to be ran. And like mm -hmm. I said, with all the artists there, so so when you come around and like people not moving as as fast as you think they should because they're not used to you. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but Craig just told us this, and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now it's a conflict now. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it's like now he feeling like. He not getting the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The respect that he deserve because it's his label too, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, bro, it's like, you got to come on. Like, mm -hmm. we got business we got to do. Like, mm -hmm. this, 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 this is what's going on. Do you think that maybe he feels that way because of a lack of communication? Or, cause, cause per lazy, and I'll just say, just even talking to flesh and be, everybody always says that Cray is quiet. He don't, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times they don't know. They like, I don't know. Craig will say shit. It does be, it, 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 it do be a lack of uh, communication, but you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it was back then because before I even made that move to remove myself, to step away from Mo Thug, we was all on Remington, the street on, on Wishbone's Grandmama Street. Mm -hmm. And I told it, 
I was talking to all of them and I told them, I said, bro, we need to fire everybody we got at Mo Thug because we had our entire family with them. They had their family, I had my family. I said, we need to fire everybody. <laughs> They don't know what they doing. We don't know what we doing. <laughs> we need to hire people yeah. that know more than we know that, that know how to run a label. That's right. We, we bro, we had people at the office, like people calling, you know, calling the office, people picking the phone, talking about, what's up, who you looking for? I'm like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, man. Wow. We can't do it like that. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, so I started searching for like people, like real business people, mm -hmm. got a real like receptionist and like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like bringing people in mm -hmm. that like to make it like start looking and sounding like a real label. That's right. Like, Cause people giving us money. They're giving mm -hmm. us a lot of money mm -hmm. monthly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like more than, more than we actually spending, honestly. Damn. Okay. Like for real, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, so it's like, so it's like, like the business had to keep going. And I'm yeah. like, bro, like, and, and and I explained this to him. And when I went down here to Relativity Records, mm -hmm. that's not what I said to them. Bro, I had a I had a black attorney at the time named Donald Walton. He knew the inside stuff and why I was fed up and you know what I'm saying? But like I said, I had a meeting with everybody and everybody agreed and said, okay, let's, okay, we get rid of everybody. I went out of town, came back. The office, it, it's, 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 it's a party in the office. Nothing get done. So I'm like, you know what, bro? I gotta, I'm gonna step aside from this. Mm. So when I went to New York and went to Relativity Records, <clears throat> my, my, my attorney, who was a black man, he came to me and he said, this was his exact words. He said, man, look, I know you and your brother's going through what you're going through. But don't go up in here and tell up and tell these people your personal business like that. Keep that amongst yourselves. I said I had no intentions on telling them nothing about that anyway. But see what happened was I had a dude that was with us from the hood. He said some shit in a meeting to where one of my niggas rest in pieces of goon. The nigga came on me. I'm in I'm in the hood over my nigga Boogie Nike House from the Poetic Hustlers mm -hmm. and. My nigga Velo come down the street like, where the fuck Lazy Ball on that? He smoked Sherm. Mm -hmm. So everybody like, oh, this nigga tripping. Mm -hmm. You know, me, I get out there in the street with him like, nigga, what's wrong with you? He like, I'm telling you, I ain't fucking with y'all no more, nigga, because Cray said, Mo Thug was dead and should be buried. And if he had crossed you, he had crossed me. And I ain't fucking with y'all no more. Mm. Walked away, and my nigga didn't even fuck with me no more. Mm. So I know I, I really felt like he wasn't lying. Mm. He 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 was in our circle, so he heard me complaining about man, yo, this nigga need you know like step it up and da 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 da. So he goes back and tell Lay that I went up in the office and told these people mm. that this dude didn't even go in the meeting with me. Mm. This dude is a dude a, a dude from the hood. Rest in peace, he one of my dudes from the hood, but I did not take this dude in a business meeting with me and my attorney mm -hmm. to talk business. So he went back and told Lay this and Lay believed it. Mm -hmm. But I never told these people this. I told them, I said, we not seeing eye to eye creatively. And I just want to step aside and focus on my album, Thug Mentality, because I plan on doing a double CD. They was like, oh, Wow, okay. And I said, so I just want to focus on that and I long and I no longer want to be a part of Mo Thug. And they said, okay, cool. But if you're not going to be a part of it anymore, we're going to drop the label. And I was like, oh damn. <laughs> I was like, seriously? They was like, yeah. Like they was like, if you're not going to be a part, we don't want to be a part of it anymore. You know what I'm saying? We understand and we want you to focus on your solo rock. And I was like, okay, cool. Damn. And that's, bro, and that's what it was. Wow. No so, lie. So you and Lay never had this exchange or conversation? Yes, we have. Oh. He may not remember, but oh, yes. Okay. Yes, we, we've, okay. we've had it like several times, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in different 
atmospheres, mm -hmm. different tone of voices. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Like Cold for getting yeah. into it. And, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is that where Mo Thug kind of disbanded? As as I guess as we knew it, because I knew it was a mothership yeah. and, and different albums after that, but I don't know if they were they independent or were they still through Relativity? Yeah, yeah, they uh, they were still through. Uh, well, no, no, um, no, because um, after um, Relativity had dropped it, and I I don't know where where, where the next deal okay that came from. They they definitely got another distribution deal, but I don't know. But you had stepped away. Yeah, after yeah, the second yeah. Family Scriptures. Yeah, I I, I stepped away and started Thug Line. Thug Line. Yeah. Okay. Which you then, which you then took Thug Line to Relativity as well, or was it loud? Um, yeah, it, yeah. At that time, Relativity had, was was shut down, and um, okay, and went to loud. Yeah, okay. Yeah, with Steve Rifkin, yep. correct? Yes, and yes, that's indeed. where you took Thug Mentality as well. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Thug Mentality was with um, Relativity. Okay. The thug on the Line was with Loud. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. But we can't skip over Art of War. Oh, so yeah, because yeah, now you do the double CD Art of War, mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. is after coming after Mo Thug, right? Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> double CD, uh, super dope album. Um, to me, musically, sonically, it sounded like you started to kind of take the lead creatively. Is that mm -hmm. is that a fair assessment? I'm on the outside looking in, but that's what it sounded like yeah. on Art of War. Yeah, because like you know what I'm saying, um. For some reason, you know, um, after Eternal, like during that album, like we would, on on some of them hooks, we would actually all go in the studio at once and sing, sing it. We we right. did like, um, you know, like um, Creeping We Came like that. Mm -hmm. No, not Creeping We Came, like Creeping On The Come, whatever, whatever song it is. <laughs> we, uh, so, so like we did a lot of the hooks in there, like, mm -hmm. like a Together. real group. Yeah. Like, so, um, but then for some reason when that album uh came Art of War, mm -hmm. I, I was just the first person to the studio. Like like DJ Unique would call me, like, yo, come check these beats out I got. I go to the studio, I lay down the hook, and I always did this. Mm -hmm. I lay down the hook thing and everybody else would come in and add to the hook and like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um uh and, and then but they just stopped getting on the hooks. Mm. <laughs> you know what so I'm that's what it was. What, so what yeah. do you think that was attributed to? Like, why do you think you you seemingly maybe I'm, I'm guessing I'm not talking for anybody, but seemingly a little more focused and still had that vigor for the music, to because it sounds like it. If, if you if you keep up with Bone Music, then Art of War sounds like you know it's yeah. crazy's you know thumbprint all over it. So yeah. why Man. do you think they weren't as focused at that time? Man, because I like. Man, I'm always in this. I'm never not in the studio. Mm -hmm. Like, there's never. I can't remember. Like, uh, the last time, like, I haven't went to a studio at least twice or, <clears throat> or three times a week. Mm, wow. Like, unless I'm traveling, mm -hmm. and then I got my little portable. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, with yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <clears throat> so it's like, I'm always in the studio. That's why. I was volunteered to go second for the in, in line with it because I was against the solo projects. Mm. I was against Why? them. I was like, bro, it's not time. Okay. I'm like, bro, we fresh. Like we, it's not. It's so much stuff we could do as a group. It's not time for a solo project yet. Oh, wow. I don't. I don't think it's <clears throat> a smart idea. Lay was like, I think we should do it, man. You know, I think we should let B get this off his chest. Mm -hmm. He said because I think this would. I think this what he, I think this is what he really want to do is do a solo project by himself. Mm -hmm. he, I, he said, I think we should let him do it. You know what I'm saying? So he can get off his chest and come back. Mm -hmm. But that didn't really work. Yeah. Why you Why you say it didn't work? He didn't really come back all like that. Mm. So you think once B did- At the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he did Heaven's Movie, it was all about yeah. busy? Yeah, he was gone for-, for Damn. Yeah, for a while. Oh, wow. Okay, because yeah. I mean, on the outside looking in, we still hearing him on the records, so we don't really know. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you wouldn't really see him in the videos. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, because he wasn't in looking to my eyes. I don't think. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah. So speaking of which, with um, with um, Art of War. So, talk to me about 
it's all real. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, dope ass song. That's that's me and my yeah. daughter. One of mm. our favorite songs. Yeah, man. That's that's what's crazy is that I, that's a blend of like <laughs> that's, that's a blend of like those uh, verses I kick. It's like a blend of like verses I wrote like like separately. Like, mm -hmm. and I just like heard that beat along with the harmonies. I just put those like said mm -hmm. those verses and they went with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was like, but that song is just like. I was always offended that song. It's uh, it's all you know, it's all real. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I gotta use this. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that beat came on, I was just like, yo, I just fell into the beat, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, is I that beat I, an <clears throat> interpolation of something, or is that original beat? Um, I don't know. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what. Mm -hmm. You need to be having like a little shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is for real. Yeah. It seemed like you was you you got super introspective on that album too. You know what I mean? Because <clears throat> like it's all real for me. That was like really the introduction to who Crazy Bone was as a person and as an artist to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. prior to that, it was just more the gangster shit and whatever, whatever. But yeah. that song seemed more. This is my personality. This is who I am. This is how I think. This is and it has mm -hmm. some gangster shit in it. Yeah. But is that fair to say? I mean, that whole album was like that because I think that's the first time <clears throat> we actually, that's the first time we actually mentioned God mm -hmm. on the album, mm -hmm. was 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 on that album. Mm -hmm. Because bef like, you know, like the first two albums was just us and our frustration, just fresh off the streets. Fresh just off like, the streets, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? We, just, this who we is, da da da. But that Art of War album was kind of us like settling in to who we were now. That's, that's exactly, that's the you know perfect word, yeah, exactly, yeah, like, settling in. Yeah, we was kind of like settling in to it yeah. like and just like getting comfortable yeah. with it at the time. It seemed like, and it was a slower album too. It was more melodic, yeah. it yeah. was more musical, yeah, you know. Uh, almost damn near when you think about Hate Nation and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, well, it's a couple Dang, other ones, yeah. it's almost yeah. Doug, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it was damn near like slow songs almost. Yeah, man, yeah, cause I, I, I didn't want, like I said, I didn't I didn't want us to be put inside a box. It's uh -huh. just, oh yeah, they, them, them, that's bone thugs. They gonna make some straight gangs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I wanted like to really stress, like yeah. when I understood what kind of style we had, and once I was like- What you could do with it. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, like we, we get, it, it's, it's no limit to this, so yeah. we need to push it. Yeah. Like, and that's when we started doing songs like If I Could Teach the World, yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And like, and all, like Change the World and all yeah. those kind of songs, bro. Yeah. Just like doing like more lighter music because mm -hmm. it was a lot of rumors going around talking about we was devil worshipers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And we had to- Cause of the Ouija set, board and the yeah. dark imagery and all yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, but so, <clears throat> so, so we had to let them see, you know what I'm saying? That Ouija board was just an experience we went through. Like everything <laughs> we talk about in our music, yeah. something we did, we played, and you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So also on 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 uh Art of War, <clears throat> y'all start, you know, you start having a couple of uh challengers, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, you know, you got you got, you know, Twister and you mm -hmm. got uh Crucial Conflict, you have these different groups in the Midwest that's throwing their little jabs. And this is the first album that y'all addressing some of this, but subliminally. Y'all never came yeah. out and said it, but on all original, uh, yeah. you ain't bone, look into my eyes. <laughs> yeah. You know, y'all start, you know, was that something that y'all sat down and said, okay, you know what? We we gonna address these niggas, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, yeah, it it it, it was like some subliminals. Like, yeah. It was it was a lot of subliminals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you ain't bone. I mean, you know, that's but, straightforward. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but them, you know, they them 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 niggas said shit too. You know? Oh no, and they no, said shit directly. No, yeah, them niggas sure. ain't say no uh, subliminals. No. no, but like we wouldn't. I, man, I was like, you know, what I'm saying like, we was the kind of dudes like, okay, we'll mention it, but like, we ain't gonna like if it's yeah if it's real beef, we gonna like that's right. We was like, you know, what I'm saying on, we handle it. Yeah, yeah, on site we handle yeah. it. You know, what I'm saying like, and we were still we were still them wild dudes. Yeah. Like, so we wasn't like we ain't gonna talk too much about it. You know, what I'm saying like, but. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, I'm gonna ask you the same thing I asked Lake. <laughs> so you as an artist, as Crazy Bone, um, which artist or which group did you feel like, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, these niggas is jocking our shit. Like who was on your radar at the time? Like that you was like, 
that they may be a formidable opponent when you heard them. Like, okay, crucial conflict. I see y'all niggas, but y'all ain't fucking with us. Do or die, whatever. Man, we didn't, bro, we didn't, we didn't like nobody that sounded like us. Like we didn't care if it was a group, <laughs> solo artist, <laughs> duo. Yeah. We, we didn't care like, we, like we, 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 but we was against it. Like, cause like you said, like we was raised. Yeah. Like, why y'all niggas trying to sound like that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, no, we wasn't flattered at first. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> definitely said, was not no, flattered. no, we wasn't flattered. <laughs> yeah, definitely was not flattered. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, as time went by, you know what I'm saying? We understood that we were slowly chasing, changing the sound of hip hop. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Know what I'm Exactly. Still, I mean, still to this yes. day. Still, still to those this day. Effects yeah. that exactly. Stayed. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So That's the impact. The like, and Twister and Crucial Cover, all of them is pioneers in that too. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like sure. back then it was egos, man. But exactly. like, that was the beginning of something. You know what I'm saying? Like for and, real. Well, and you and guys, wanna... I'm from the West Coast. To me, to us, it was just the Midwest sound. Mm -hmm. Like, every, yeah. you know what I mean? On the Definitely. West Coast, because we had, what well, I'm, I'm from NorCal, so we had Brother Lynch and Sebo yeah. and and yeah. that was the NorCal sound, but mm -hmm. the Midwest for us, it was like, well, yeah, it's Bone and Crucial Conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hell yeah. Speed Not Mobsters yep. and Twisted, you know, whoever, mm -hmm. whoever. And see, me and my group, we always got the Bone comparisons. But for us, we was flattered. Whenever we yeah. got mentioned in that echelon, we was flattered, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, but he, he wasn't. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I know in 2023, Gray was like, nigga, fuck you. you. I was probably one of the groups you was talking about. Like, and don't even know it, you know what I mean? But um, uh, but but let me say this too, because I want to point this out also for the younger generation. Let the record reflect that all of these guys are cool to this day. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Let the Never. record reflect that, you know, Bone Thugs, Twister, do or die, oh, yeah. you know, crucial conflict, three six, all these yeah, guys yeah. is fam, dog Definitely. pound, everybody's cool. So it's a lesson in that. You know what I mean? All day. You keep waking up every day and and you mature and what you think was really about something is trivial. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You know, just like how you grew up, you know what I'm saying? Like you grew up in elementary and Junior high with your homies, you get in the fights, you fall out with them, you know what I'm saying? Yep. But you grown and y'all cool, you know what I'm saying? It's, I was just I mean, talking to my daughters about that in the car. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like, it ain't that serious. It ain't that serious. <laughs> it ain't that, that serious. That serious. Uh, and another thing I want to ask you too, bro. So on Art of War, <clears throat> there were two family scripture songs, mm -hmm. two versions. Why? Why did y'all do that? Um, Man, because uh, I don't know. <laughs> that beat was just um I don't even I think we did the one with just us first. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know why I just I had everybody else get on the beat. I was like, I just want to do a more thug version. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And like I just had everybody like, I'm like, y'all come on and put verses on this. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean yeah. I always wondered that. It was dope. Both of them yeah. was dope. But, yeah. Okay. And so so now you go into the we go into the the thug mentality. So uh you so ain't gonna touch on Thug Love? Isn't that Art of War too? What it was. It? Oh yeah, yeah, Thug, Thug Love. Love. So real yeah. quick, I gotta I gotta ask, bro, just because it's all these conflicting stories. So mm -hmm. I asked Lay, you know, Busy has his version, Lay had his version, mm -hmm. Fat Joe apparently has his version. <laughs> <laughs> so so I asked you, so I asked mm -hmm. Lay, because Fat Joe had said that it was some apprehension that y'all had from report uh recording. Uh, Notorious Thugs with Notorious Big because you had already done the, the Thug Love with Pop, right? Mm -hmm. So Lay said that wasn't true. He said that there was ever any apprehension. But then again, people in the comments was like, well, shit, it's five of them niggas. So maybe Lay wasn't the one he talked to. Busy was the one who said he didn't want to do it at first because he okay. had just done a song, because we had just done a song with Pop. Okay, so Fat Joe wasn't lying. No, I never said that because I'm okay. like, bro, we ain't got nothing to do with that. This is we we stay neutral in all of this. Okay, and it's a good thing we did because both of them songs are legendary to this day. For sure, yes, sir. I'm sure. Like we don't we like like that's not our beef. It's not your politics, yeah. That, you, like so so let's let, like that's mm -hmm. we, we need to do this song. This this gonna be huge. This mm -hmm. big like you know what I'm saying. Like and we man like it wasn't that you it, it wasn't that serious. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad everybody understood that because <clears throat> I was definitely jumping on it for yeah. sure. 
Okay. Wow. So that shit, there it is. That's did, it, did did they that's ever, I mean, what was Big's perspective? Because Big knew you was on the pop song. He didn't care either. He just wanted a bone song. But he, Big never said nothing to us about Tupac at all, bro. Yeah. And we never said <laughs> nothing to him about pop. Mm-hmm. It's like nothing was said when Pac did the album My Big, bro. It was like niggas done music and that was it. Yeah. We were completely out of it. Had no words. Nobody can never say, oh, yeah, Bone said that. Yeah. Nah, no, we didn't. Well, and I guess, it, I mean, I guess even when you was doing Pac stuff, you was originally <laughs> Easy's artist and there would be a death row. And, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. there's so many different beefs y'all yeah. weren't part of. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. you got legendary. I mean, from E, Pac, and Big. Like, yeah, I don't know man. if any group has ever no. done that. Man, no. Mm-mm. Wow, you just cleared that up. You you just kind of vindicated Fat Joe, actually. So a lot of people in the comments gonna have to apologize because oh, they've yeah. been saying that he was yeah, capping with that. Him. Yeah, they've been dragging him. You know what I mean? Because Lay yeah. was like, no, but he I was know, like, I did, man, but he I didn't know. say that busy. That I know busy. people be saying Fat Joe be sounding like he always got a story, man. Mm-hmm. That nigga always been there. Yeah, all them stories he tell, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, Fat Joe's that dude, bro. Okay. Yeah, you see him in he, the pictures. He was the like. He was in the video, Thug Devotion. Mm-hmm. Like, Fat Joe was like one of the first dudes in hip hop that took us in, like him and Terror Squad that that embraced mm-hmm. us. Like, we went mm-hmm. to New York, <clears throat> you know, because Steelo Bell rocked with him. Right. So, like, every time we went there, we hooked up with him, Pun, mm-hmm. the whole Terror mm-hmm. Squad. Terror Squad, man, they used to take us to their clubs, to their little, to the little Cuban restaurants, yeah. the Puerto Rican <laughs> restaurants, bro. bro, bro. Yeah. And like they always had our back, like Demon, uh, Tretch and Vin and mm-hmm. KG, yeah, all them dudes, man. Like so, like Joe, like when he tell them stories, he it, it ain't it ain't, ain't cap. cap. Okay, we ain't even use that word. Yeah, yeah, you it just vindicated, cap. you just vindicated Fat Joe, yeah, because they've yeah. been dragging him as it pertains to that. Um, yeah. and you know what? I kind of missed something. I want to go back to real quick too. Um, well, no. I'll actually go forward with it. So now we going to to Thug Mentality, dope ass double album. Hmm. Um, was it platinum, three time platinum? Yeah, uh, yeah, double something. Yeah. Double something like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> your first solo album, which you wasn't really in a rush to do a solo album, but uh-huh. you you delivered. Yeah. Um. So on that album, um, you want to do the heat heat it heavy. Mm. <laughs> we talked about this before the camera came on. Heated heavy. Yeah. Was that song? Was that was that just some? Cause you, that, I think that's the fastest you probably had ever rapped prior to that. Is that fair uh, to say? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably so. Yeah. It, was that your intention? Like you just said, I'm gonna go in and I'm finna show these niggas. These niggas is trying to take our shit. Let me show them that they can't do it like I can do it. Man, it's crazy, man. Cause cause that beat, bro. Like I heard that beat, like. How'd you catch it, man? I- so, <laughs> so I had uh, I, I had I had this, this this cassette tape on me for a long time. Like somebody gave me this cassette tape, and I had it for a long and never played it. So I was in the studio one day and I played it, and this beat came on, and it's like, man, like going. I was like, yo, this beat is crazy. It is. Like so, I was like, so I got to write to it. Da, 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 da. Came up with the song, bro, and just was like. Spazzing on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it did the whole song and then finished it and got got this, like, and and was ready, like, to mix it and was like, (laughs) looked at the tape to see who the producer was and with no name on the tape. Oh, shit. So I'm like, to this day, I'm waiting for whoever did the beat. Are you serious? They got to claim they did it too. Who who, who, who was it produced by? They got to to, to prove they did, huh? Who, Who does it say it's produced by? Or you had somebody remake it? No, 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 no. I used the two track, and For I real? said whoever come forward with the beat, whoever we pay him. Damn, <laughs> what the credits say on there? Uh, I, I man, I forgot what the. I credits looked on Wikipedia. <laughs> it says him. Oh, me? Yeah, it says you. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, cause, because I, I like like whenever I get get, get beats like that, I just mm-hmm. put my name, and then when they if they step forward, I, we never said we get them the credit. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so that's that, a double platinum yeah. album. Yeah, I done done that like like a few times. Really? Like, yeah, because like sometimes like people send their stuff, but they don't they don't have the information, and the beat's so dope, I can't wait for these niggas. I yeah. got to, <laughs> I got to go, baby. We gonna pay you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we gonna pay you. <laughs> I want to try something real quick. If you down to do it real quick. So I raised my daughter on Bone Thugs, right? Mm-hmm. Not, not she, this song. Huh? This song? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just start the heated heavy 
right? And we all three gonna do it and see who mess up first. Oh, okay. I, look, I gotta add it. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, 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 no. We gotta do it all together. The what? niggas do this shit together. I'll I'll judge. Five niggas I'm gonna do judge. I'm gonna judge. I'm gonna judge. Five yeah. niggas can do one verse. This is so long. <laughs> Just a few bars. We're gonna okay. see who mess up first. All right. So uh we starting with the chorus? Running with the shoot him if they shoot him if they shoot him if they move. Running with the egg forty seven, but he to heaven. Nigga let away a wedding when I get up and run it with the egg forty seven, but he to heaven. Nigga let away a wedding when I get up and run it with the egg forty seven, but he to heaven. Nigga let away a wedding when I get up and run it with the egg forty seven, but he to heaven. Okay, start the verse. I start the verse. Running with the egg forty seven, but he to heaven. Bust the niggas in the belly, then the follow with the fifty to seven, then the hundred, but it's gonna get him. Nigga let away a wedding when I get up and get a bit of bit of bit of spit the pussy niggas on the ass like an overdose of penicillin. Murder, nigga want to pick a visit. With it. We gotta, we gotta confront the future with it, and bullets come with it. Hold the nigga pussy big in the stock, so that we take a question when we walk. A lot of niggas can talk, they better not be acting. Nigga better show me some affirmative action, cause I'ma take it, baby, bow coming through blasting. And it's a nigga get trippin' 'bout to go back. And nigga that cross flies, no lie. The motherfucker full of five be blind, it's like hell of a war. So motherfucker bring it on, bitch. Hell yeah, we ready for the longest. Who you wanna come with? Yes, we said it. So nigga to die, we got to be ready, ready. Got into the game just a little too deep. The motherfuckers on the creep, and I can't sleep until my enemies rest in peace, rest in peace. <laughs> All right, so she she All was right. out first. Was you just started doing ad libs. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I got more than her. I, I, I watched the whole I shit. I, I watched the whole shit. This you know how hard it is to catch that beat. Right. You know how hard it is to mess up one yeah. time. Like, nah. boy, that's talent, my nigga. That's talent. After yeah. twenty years, you still know them no lyrics like that. No warm up. No warm up. That's oh, crazy. Yeah. Definitely. Amer hey, so when I introduced him, I said America's most complete artist. So, man, you know, nah, that's dope, man. I appreciate <laughs> you doing that. So going to this album, Thug Mentality, one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, uh, World War. Uh, yes. Was you addressing the one. fight that y'all had with Do or Die at the um, uh, Ghetto Cowboy video shoot? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned it. Yeah, what happened with? I that? wasn't was there. Oh, you wasn't there. I was at the shoot. Okay, but you wasn't at the fight. No, -uh. uh. I got the that was that was all lazy ball. <laughs> <laughs> that was all lazy. Yeah, the, uh, so she went, like some of my people. You know. What oh, saying? Okay. Yeah, but uh, I got the call. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, it was um, you know what I'm saying. But I had started hearing stuff where people was talking about you know, they ran. I was mm -hmm. like, no. <laughs> not the story. Okay, okay. Um, so on that album, another thing I wanted to ask you creatively, and I just wanted to know, payback is a bitch and the bitch is on a period. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> we was talking about that before. Yeah, I'm like, I used to be singing it, payback is a Yo, bitch man. and the bitch is on a period. Yo. I'm like, what the fuck am I rapping? What does that man, mean? When I came up with that line, I was like, <laughs> I was like, yo, this is cold. <laughs> I thought I came with the coldest bar, man. No, but um, cuz, man, it's like, you know, like, you know, yeah. when women said to be on their period, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you know, yeah. they right. it's they're grumpy, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the payback I'm bringing, you know what I'm saying, is a little period, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not playing, you know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so, oh, man. It's I, me I, too, I, movement. Hey, get so, <laughs> so here in 24 years, I'll probably get an answer man, to that. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> so, um, but then you do the, um, so you have Mariah Carey on the album. Yeah, where yes, I still yes. believe, so. I mean, damn, at that point you had to know as an artist you have arrived, you have arrived. And I believe, oh, yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. not mistaken, did she seek you out or you sought her out for that? I still believe. No, 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 no. Uh we done breakdown first. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh <coughs> and um <coughs> I went after her for uh <coughs> for that. I'm I, I'm like, yo, I gotta have you on the album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was going after like a whole lot of features. I was like, yo, yeah. I gotta have you. <coughs> she came through. You know okay. what I'm saying? She was like, Yeah, I'm gonna give you this version. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And let's rock. I was like, cool. Man. Did the video and everything. Was, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. And it was the the brat was in there, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So what was that like working with Mariah Carey and the brat? Man, man, it was cool, man. You know what I'm saying? I bro, I remember mm -hmm. this video, man. First of all, right. First of all, she tried to have me. You know what I'm saying? You seen I had on the the, the, the little the little sombrero and yeah, the little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Then she tried to have me walk around with bare feet. I say, <laughs> Look, Mariah, <laughs> I'm not about to walk around here with no damn, 
with no shoes on, yeah. bare feet, you carrying a lamb around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting on some Timberlands, okay? That's what I'm about to put on, like who here? Yeah, man, but it was cool. Bro. Mm. I mean, like we was out in this little crazy, it was like a little old like Mexican town. It was mm-hmm. dope, it was dope. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, um, it was dope. Like the, the the video, I love the song because I love the original version of the song, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So when she came with that, I was like, yo, we got another one right here for Yeah, real. yeah. Definitely. When you said the the, the original version, that was a remix. With that, what? With the that? Still song? believe? I mean that. Um, that if you that. Uh, I mean she took parts of the old song from from the from oh. the Willy Wonka. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dope. So, I, man, I'm curious because, like you said, you had a bunch of features, man. They so at that point, I guess loud. Your budget had to be crazy. They was just letting you do whatever at that point. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I mean, got all. I think I had like what? Man, it was. Everybody was on that. Wow. Yeah. Fat Joe, Big Pun. Yeah, Gangsta Boo. Had Gangsta Boo. <laughs> Rest e- in peace to Gangsta Boo. Rest in peace, E-40. Mm-hmm. Uh, had uh, Marley, Stephen Marley. Stephen Marley, you know yeah. How uh, did that come about with Gangsta Boo being that y'all was, you know, still kind of coming out the rap beef at that point? Man, well, you know, like around that time, man, a lot of people didn't know, but I had I had had, had a conversation. I'll forget, it. I don't know if it was um, Paul or Juicy J, mm-hmm. I forget, but we was on like a conference call and with with Lyle, and one of them was like, you know, what I'm saying while we was on the call waiting, he was like, you know, what I'm saying he was like, hey man, you know, I just want to know, bro, we it ain't no beef over here. We out here making music, we making money, da da da. Ain't no beef. We need to come together. And I'm like, bro, that's what we on too. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm gonna holler at my dudes like we ain't on that. <clears throat> we ain't on that beef. You know what I'm saying? You could like this when we getting older. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, like we ain't on that beefing either, bro. Like we with that for real. Like, yeah. Straight up. That's dope. That's dope. And you and Paul yeah. maintained a relationship since then. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. We always been cool for sure. Did you have a relationship with Gangsta Boo over the years? Uh well, um, I started talking to her more like maybe like six or seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Like we were cool, like doing music and like yeah. Yeah, stay in the contact. I mean, she was cool people for real. Yeah, that was the homie. It was funny. She was supposed Definitely. to come to the show actually yeah. before she passed away. Yeah. 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 Damn. So, and then you had E40 on there too, Fat yeah. Joe. What was it like working with E Feezy? Man, 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 that boy always come through, man. <laughs> E40 always been cool too. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Like, ever since we've been knowing him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He been, he always been that, that dude. Interesting thing though. Um, Busy wasn't on the owl. I tried to get him. Yeah, what what happened with that? Was he just not really just he was just doing his own thing? He yeah, just... yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, what I'm saying he that's he that was the time he was doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. So on that album again, just having a creative conversation, bro. Like I said, we are gonna talk about the music. What is like? <clears throat> Cause you flipped some records on there, like even with paper. You know, that mm-hmm. was a surf surface uh, yeah. sample. Yeah. Uh, where. Where did you did you come up with the concept to do street people, in terms yeah. of the music? Yeah, because that's a sample from Breaking, mm-hmm. from yeah. Firefox. Yeah, is that yeah. something you you came up with that? Yeah, I always wanted I always wanted to to uh, remake that song. Oh, or that's crazy! At least do the hook. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you know what I'm saying? But um, so so my dude came with the beat. I don't even think he even took nothing from the beat. Like he mm-hmm. just he he just came with a beat that when I heard it. Mm-hmm. That's the vibe I got. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I just put the whole, <clears throat> the whole street people yeah. thing down to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. That's fascinating to me that you can take these obscure songs, you know what I mean, yeah. and these little bits and parts of uh, kind of chords and, and melodies yeah. and incorporate that and make a whole fucking song. Oh, yeah. like, we again, talking I, breaking electric boogaloo? No, that's the second one. The first mm-hmm. break. The first break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you was a fan of breakdancing back in the day. Oh yeah, what? Thank Could you win, Mel? A little bit. A little bit. That's, a, that's the only thing I couldn't get down <laughs> though. Hey, me neither, bro. I, I don't do know if I didn't have a court. Or... I didn't know if I had didn't have a coordination for it. I couldn't yeah. do it. Long and lean and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um so again, speaking about flipping records, uh, like I said, these obscure records. So even if you go to Thug on the line, um, you did time after time. Mm-hmm. Which was uh, heavy D, yeah, and yeah. I'll be sure. Don't you know? 
Yeah. What what made you do that? Because that wasn't even a record. It wasn't even a popular record. I that nigga was just talking on that record. Man, that beat was all always hard to me, <laughs> though, bro. Every yeah. time I heard that beat, I was like, then I heard it. I was I took I, I took it to my dude. I said I said, dude, can you replay this beat exactly like this? He was oh, like, that was a replay beat. Yeah. Oh yeah, shit. He was like, Sound yeah. like a sample. No, no, no. All all those beats I had like mm -hmm. replayed. Like oh damn. My dude Ish from uh from Florida, from mm -hmm. Miami, he come <clears> in, <throat> that boy makes take any beat and like make it yeah. sound like the original producer for real. Now see, time after time to me on Thug on the Line was um almost kind of like uh it's all real. It was an introspective song, you yeah. know, because you were talking about now marriage, like you mm -hmm. now on some adult grown man shit. Yeah. Uh, what was you going through at that time that that made you, you know what I mean? Because it sounded really heartfelt. Just uh, like even when you were saying like nothing, what you say nothing I try seems to work. Like yeah, it, it basically like doing the marriage thing way too early mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying that's why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's basically what that mm -hmm. what that was. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then yeah. you had Boss on that record too. Yeah, how'd you come? How'd you come across Boss? Man, yo, we remember when we had our our um. Our local album mm -hmm. out, the Faces of Death album, mm -hmm. and and the dude we had our our local album out with, we went to a store one day and he was he was like y'all listen to this, <clears throat> and it was a demo of her mm -hmm. when she was about to come out. Yeah, we was like yo, she hard as fuck. Like boss was dope when she yo, came out. <laughs> yeah, we was like, and we used to love like females who done the gangster raps. Yeah, stuff, like you know what I'm saying. Like so, we was like that's dope. That's you know what I'm saying. Like so. Like we always like listen to her music, mm -hmm. and like honestly, like I don't think like she really got the her her just due because yeah. her skill is like ridiculous, like for real. She ate that shit up with a thug level. <clears throat> yeah, for real. Yeah. So, talk to me about the Night Riders. Man, where the fuck did that come from, <laughs> and what whose idea was that? I heard now. Let me tell you what I heard. the mm -hmm. the The rumor was, or or folklore, was that. <laughs> <laughs> you was doing that shit because of contract contractual obligations. You couldn't really do nothing else. So mm. you niggas put makeup on, turned into like some hip hop kiss shit. Is that the truth or? Mm -mm, no. <clears throat> I I we never really we never really been in a position to where like we couldn't like put stuff out. We was always able to get stuff clear. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like on, I mean of, of course we had to, you know, fulfill obligations. Yeah. But like, yeah, I never really been in no situation to where, okay, like, if, like, no, you, you can't put this out. Got you. Like, no, like. Okay. So no, that was just a project <laughs> made up, just like. It, well, it was who just, came up with that? Like, who says, you know what, we gonna do some kiss shit, man, we that gonna was, be rappers? Th that was my entire creation. Yeah. <laughs> isn't the Art of War, isn't the I cover of Art of War kind of like that though? No, not like how they Man. did Night Riders. Night Riders, they was literally they look like Kiss, like they had makeup on their face, like yeah. straight up like Kiss. Yeah, so it was. I wanted to do a mix between Kiss and mm -hmm. N.W.A. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it was like, <clears throat> so it was like. <laughs> I remember I did. A, <laughs> we did a um at the Urban Network. I did a showcase back in mm -hmm. Palm Springs back in the day when they had Urban Network. We did, I, mean, I did a um um showcase and I, the group was walking down the hallway bro and people was literally like turning around mm -hmm. going the other way like, yeah they was coming down the hallway like getting they was like oh my god who is that? <laughs> bro because it was like some creepy shit and then when it, it was and went on stage everybody was like it was like easy e would have loved this <laughs> <laughs> and you was, was like, silence yeah, was. right yeah yeah and it was you larice and who Mohart? It was well, well. Originally, on the originally it was when I first started the group. Originally, it was me. Um, it was me. It was me, Felicia, mm -hmm. Thug Queen, and Soldier Boy. No, 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 no. And and, and, uh, and Sin, mm -hmm. Sin from um, Graveyard. Graveyard Shift. Shift. Yeah. But then, you know what I'm saying, um, after that, it was me, Larice, Sin, and Mo Hart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Why Why you didn't continue with the uh, 
Night Riders? Man, because it was just like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, uh, I don't know, bro. I have no idea. I guess I was had no um, no desire in dealing with another group. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. still dealing with Bone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so you were just wore down from the group shit, just ready to move on. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just didn't, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, yeah, I was just, I mean, the the project we did, the, 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 the whole project we did, you know what I'm saying? It was just kind of like. Y'all put, y'all didn't ever put nothing out though, did you? No. Okay. No, it's just like released on. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Is it something that the fans ask about? Is it something you think you'll revisit? I don't know. I don't know, man. You <laughs> yeah. know, but I think the leather faces, you know, mm -hmm. leather faces would birth that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, that's, that's, that's close to that. Mm, okay. Okay. So I kind of want to just kind of segue into, so after that, you go through the resurrection. Um, mm -hmm. I think Flesh at that point, he gets sentenced around about that time, 2000, mm -hmm. something like that, 2001. Um, <clears throat> so now you put out the resurrection on Ruthless. How, how did Flesh get getting sentenced? How did that affect you as his as his brother, as his homeboy? Bro, I was shocked because mm -hmm. I ain't even realized how, you know what I'm saying, it was that serious. I'm like, mm -hmm. so when they said that amount of time, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, I, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was crazy. So it was just like, man, it was, you know, but, but he had had, you know, he had had several run-ins with the mm -hmm. law man at the time, and mm -hmm. you know, it's only a matter of time for they, you know, right? Like, okay, look, <laughs> right. <clears throat> you do you so, do you feel like it could have they could have dealt with flesh differently? Meaning that because I had him on the show and he was talking about just certain levels of kind of dealing with mental illness and substance. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yeah. instead of maybe sending him to prison, they could have gotten him some help. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. All, you know, all the time. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like definitely. <clears throat> If they know a person need help, yeah, which they did, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, then that should be an option as well. Mm -hmm. So even on even on resurrection, like Art of War, it seemed that you took the lead again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which, <clears throat> um, artistically speaking, to me, you know, like one of the standout songs was Battle Zone. Was it Battle Cry or Battle Zone? Battle. Um... Yeah, my battle cry. Yeah, was it? Cause yeah. you rap for like forty eight bars on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, were you still kind of taking the lead with that one as well? No, no I honestly wasn't because mm -hmm. like I was. Um, I don't think I. That that was that was the first album I wasn't on all, on all the songs, mm -hmm. because I was out promoting my Thug Mentality album. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And all of a sudden I got a call. It was, you know, like, oh, you gotta end your tour and come back if you wanna do a bone album. I was like, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm out here promoting my album, you know what I'm saying? When I'm done, I'll be back. Yeah. So they started working on the album without me. <clears throat> so I'm like, cool. <clears throat> started working on it and I came in and got on the tail end on mm -hmm. some of the songs, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you was on it. most of the courses, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe yeah. that's why it feels like it was yeah. you taking the lead because of the course. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. And so at this point, <clears throat> y'all kind of, <clears throat> everybody's doing their own thing. Y'all, it seemed from the outside looking in like y'all wasn't really vibing. Like everybody kind of just doing their own thing. Niggas ain't fucking with niggas because y'all go through the strength and loyalty. Um, What was the other one? It was strength and loyalty. Um, the Unify. No, not before right. Unify. It was two, oh. it was, uh, oh, um, damn. It was Strength and Loyalty, Thug World Order. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thug World Order. Seemed like y'all was trying to pull it together and keep it together, you know, just keeping the brand alive. And mm -hmm. then finally, you know, we Unify, Flesh comes home, and then y'all do Unify. Mm -hmm. But it's not as commercially successful, it's a solid album, but not commercially as successful. What mm -hmm. do you think? attributed to it not being as successful as the previous albums. I think we didn't they we didn't keep the same formula. I think with the with the um with the hype of flesh coming out of jail, everybody was just so happy. It's like, okay, let's mm -hmm. go to the studio, put everybody on the song. Go ahead and get everybody on the song. 
But if you look back at all of our hits, <clears throat> all, all five of us have never been on a Bone Thugs and Harmony hit, ever. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we got to keep that same. It's five, it's five dudes in the group. It, it can't be five long verses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we gotta, we gotta chop it up. We gotta do different stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like we didn't keep the same chemistry. Mm -hmm. And throughout our history, everybody ain't always rapped on every song. Mm -hmm. So you think that's what y'all was doing on Unify? It, it was too mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Oh, had were y'all in the studio creating together like previous? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how was that? Like, with so much had been going on and happening, so much said. Because at this point, too, even you know the group mm -hmm. have kind of taken shots at each other on on, on albums. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how was that? Like coming, it's like full circle from the beginning. Man, it was man. Like, what's crazy is like, like the stuff y'all hear on the records. We been said that to each other. Okay. <laughs> like it ain't nothing. It ain't yeah. nothing surprising gonna come out of it. Whenever busy come out and say something, I know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like because we don't already talked about it. Like I nice. said, like discussed it or that's real. Argued about it already. Like mm -hmm. so, I'm like we never surprised. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like because it's like we address it when we like 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 when we feel like addressing it amongst each other for real. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so let's bring it up to now. Well, we ain't even gonna get into the verses. That's old. I was there, you know, at the verses <laughs> when all the shit went down. Um, <laughs> and well, the funny thing is, I'm standing on y'all side, and I'm looking like three six. I'm kind of looking like, damn. I hope they don't think that I'm against them with these <laughs> niggas. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I remember when at the verses, you was kind of. Was you was you getting into it with the DJ? Was you was you fussing at the DJ when we was at the verses? <clears throat> no, I wasn't getting into it. I I was just shocked that we played that uh, that we song. Okay, right okay. At, at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, shout out like, to Position, by the way. But you know that's the homie. But yeah, no, I wouldn't argue with him. Okay, okay. I was just like, bro, we mm -hmm. shouldn't have played that. One. Right, <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have played that one. Bro, this, this is this is not that kind of stage. Like, what what was your thoughts when this shit went down with B when y'all clashed? Bro, I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, uh, first of all, I, I I didn't hear what uh, uh -huh. Jazzy J. I, I mean, what Juicy J said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't hear that. You know what I'm saying? So when I heard Busy flipping, I'm like, what the hell is this nigga doing now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? And I didn't I didn't find that out until. After I was backstage, about to leave, mm -hmm. and then one of my dudes came in. That's what he told me. He was like, "Man, dude, called told, told Beta. You know what I'm saying? What yeah. he told him? You know what I'm saying? He told him. I was like, "What? I was like, I ain't hear that. Oh, okay. But still, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, at the time, I'm like, nigga, this is like, yeah, we been we didn't we didn't build up too much hype for like yeah. this to, for for uh, for this to end like this, like you yeah. know what I'm saying, like especially because niggas didn't fight in the '90s when they was young. Bro, it's like <laughs> bro, that's what I was saying. I'm like this this stuff should have been handled 20 years. Yeah, ago. <laughs> like y'all niggas should have got this. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you should have aired this out a long time ago, man. Yeah. Like, for real. Yeah. So, did do you feel like that made? Because I know you and DJ Paul are, are super tight. You know, yeah. did that make? kind of make y'all even cooler at that point. Yeah, bro, like we I mean cuz it was honestly like like me and him was going to do something like mm -hmm. fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like due to the project we working on, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We just we just going to play some of our hits back and forth, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it turned into, you know, like yeah. let's do the whole big thing like this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So so I mean and bro, yeah, bro, we still I was still cool with Boo afterwards, still yeah. cool with Paul, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I really ain't got no connections with Jay, but you know yeah. what I'm saying. But like, I'm cool with cool with all of them, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So real. you and Paul got some new shit coming out. Yeah, definitely working on something. You know what I'm saying. So y'all doing a duo album, or is he producing a solo album? No, he producing and duo album. Yeah. Okay. Yes, indeed. Okay. Y'all got a he uh, producing title it as well. Yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. So DJ Paul is he is he rapping and producing or just oh, yeah. producing? Okay. Both. Okay. You gotta give me spit some of them bars, man. Some of them. Grammy Memphis bars. Yeah, yeah that's right. If you, who's your favorite bone? Man, my favorite bone, man. Um, back in the, not, I'm just, back in the day, it was um, 
uh, when we was in junior high school, it was Flash. Because mm -hmm. the boy voice used to sound so cold on the mic, he used to be like, and the flow just, you know what I'm saying, he used to be flowing, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah. He was my favorite dude. I mean, man, like, I mean, it it, it depends though, man. I, I'm I, I like a fan of them on different, depending on what yeah. the song is. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. Like, What's your certain, favorite Bone album? Your favorite solo Bone album? <clears throat> um, what you mean, like? Like, Lay, you, Lay got his solo. Oh, All, everybody with the exception <clears throat> of Wish got a solo yeah. album. So what, what would be your top Bone solo album? Probably, uh, I like Flesh's, um, his, his first one. The Thugs? Yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely. And so why, the question that everybody wants to ask, it's probably like the ninth wonder of the world, is Wish. <laughs> why Wish ain't never released a solo album? Man, I don't know. Come on, man. That's your man's. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Why he never put out a solo album? Bro, you can get him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask him. Come yeah. on, Chuck. I'm going to ask him. No, you can't just ask me because I guarantee you first thing you're gonna say is it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so you never tried to push him to do it, like man, yeah, all the time. He got a couple, man, all the time. I keep yeah. telling him like all the time, like everybody has, like it's. Uh huh. We don't know why he ain't done it yet. So let's talk about you know podcasting. Is you you actually got into the podcast game early. You've been, cause yeah. you was doing the thing with uh, Dash Radio for, uh, yeah. you had, what was it called? It, before it was Truth Talks, it was, um, what was it? It was like the Quick Fix. The Quick Fix, yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Um, So now you have Truth Talks. How, how you, what made you get into the podcast game? Man, well, uh, well, we first started doing it, like even before Dash, it was at a spot um, down in Hollywood. It was, um, it was called T-Radio V. Mm -hmm. And like it was just like kind of like a Howard Stern setup, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like we would do talk shows, show videos, and mm -hmm. like and we like doing it, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But dude, like I know they confiscated the spot, shut him on down. Mm -hmm. but so <laughs> so we had to like find a new spot, and that's when we went to Dash. Mm -hmm. So we started doing like the talk stuff over there at Dash, and man, like we just we just we just like doing it from there. Like our show was basically like the average, you know, it was like what you hear on the average podcast at first, mm -hmm. but then as I start going along and recognizing the power and the, you know, the voice and, mm -hmm. the, and, and the views. I started to do it like a little bit more positive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? They're just out there, just doing the same old talking about what rapper got shot, who went to jail, exactly. who's sleeping with who. Yep. It's, it's already enough of that already. So real shit. I wanted to do something where 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 people could learn from. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like be educated and uplifted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was my, you just answered my next question. Cause I was going to tell you with you being so, you know, as they say, quiet, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But yet you love to talk and do the the podcast and talk yeah. show shit. And yeah. I was going to say, what was your motivation? But yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No, I feel that. I feel that. Cause it's, it's funny because I would consider, depending on who you ask, you know, there's people that would say that I was quiet too. Is yeah. that fair, Monkey? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, people would say I'm quiet too, <laughs> but <that? laughs> I always would, you know, come alive either as an artist or doing this. You yeah. know what I mean? Definitely. And to your point, that's why we created the platform because we wanted to kind of speak into what I said earlier: balance. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's enough for the bullshit. It's enough yeah, for the the, the, the the snitch channels and the gossiping exactly. and the salacious shit. Like, you know, yeah. what's your thought on that? Us coming from a different generation and having to. Uh, adjust to this digital age and the social media age. What's your thought on like social media and just how we use it as a culture? Man, you know, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's, it could be good and bad, like everything mm -hmm. else in this world. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like anything in this world can be <clears throat> good or bad. If you, ha it could be bad if you use too much of it. Mm -hmm. Good if you know how to use it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <clears throat> It, you know, I was just telling my dude the other day, it's like, man, it's like everybody's life. It seems like everybody's life is based on social media. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like people wake up, get on social media, mm -hmm. they're getting plugged in. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're there all day long. Mm -hmm. that, that, man, I realized the other day, I was like, <laughs> yo, I'm like, people is like really, it's on then to like social media. So it's like, 
you had to be careful and balanced. If you gotta, you get, you got, you gotta unplug from it. Like Real shit, some days, bro. I don't even like people be getting mad at me. I'm like, look here, man. I don't sit around on social media all damn right. day. Like, Real shit. I'm the worst one of those people who's supposed to be marketing this stuff. Like, I, I don't like. Right. Like, I'm not about to sit on here all day and like mm-hmm. listen to people's conversations that mean absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Not deleted. Like, you know what I'm saying? I deleted like, mm-hmm. everything like nothing, three years like, ago. You know like, mm-hmm. It's not even worth it. For real. I, I can't wait to come on social media, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> of what we do, yeah. we kind of have to yeah. be plugged in, you know, for the obvious. But I'm telling you, nigga, when, when I. If I get that big, big bag, bro, when they say hustling to disappear, mm. dog, I'm coming off social media and I'm getting a pager. I ain't, even, I don't even want a phone to be, you know, that accessible like that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like I, I, it's too much stimuli. Like it's going through social media, so much bullshit, mm-hmm. there's so much information. It takes up so much of your time. And believe it or not, this shit gets in your spirit too. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, and then, and, and then you become too, too, you know what I'm saying? Like you become too much wrapped up in it, like, like, yep. like too wrapped up in it. Like, and then next yep. thing you know, the whole day gone because you sitting up watching other people's lives go. Yep. <laughs> you know what and what and mean? all of that shit is all produced. It's all yeah. bullshit. You yeah, know definitely. what I mean? It's like so. You get. I like I I like to stay in the real life. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. man? And just like stay tuned in to what's going on around you because that's this is a distraction it is i, I feel that, you that, that that's what it, no that's what it was put there for mm-hmm. a distraction while they doing what they doing it's a whole bigger plan you know what i'm saying people running around here doing it every day and so, so caught up in this mm-hmm. they plotting and planning yeah and mm-hmm. when they jump out the bushes it's too late <laughs> like real talk yeah. Yeah. I, I want to have another episode of all on conspiracies. I know. These are real theories. Really, yeah. I got a, I got a bunch of shit I be thinking too. <laughs> yes. There's a whole episode yes. behind that. Yeah. So I wanted to um I wanted to also bring up just just to highlight a couple of things that you've been doing over the years. Um your clothing line. Yeah. Your TL clothing line. You've had that for a, a cool minute, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, going on twenty years, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. twenty years. I mean, you kind of got in early. Is that still? Is that still moving for you? Is that still? A, oh yeah, a yeah, 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 man. It, we 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 still rocking and rolling, man. Getting ready to, and that's another thing as well. You know, mm-hmm. with the with, with, with my partners. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Let us know what you got coming, bro. Man, uh, um, what I'm working on right now is my nonprofit, spread the love. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Down in Cleveland, I'm working on building a school to educate these up and coming aspiring artists, you know what I'm saying, to give them leverage on the battlefield when they step into these big corporations, you know, because mm-hmm. I feel we need to be educated, just like the athletes are educated by the time they get to the pros. We mm-hmm. need that same line of education. So that's my main thing I'm working on, man. I'm always working on music, man. Okay. Always. Okay, always. new albums. New al- Yes, I'm working on Chasing the Devil, Volume 2, and I'm also working on Crazy Melodies, Volume 2. So, yeah. Okay, all yes, right. Indeed. But listen, man, it's a holding court podcast, man. We finally had Crazy Bone, you know, yes, that I've been wanting to get. I appreciate you coming, my brother. Oh, um, good, you know, we've been trying to make this happen. Producer Ken, my daughter Rachel Renee, man. Yeah, yeah. We That's have good. to have you back on the show too, because you oh, know, good. we got we can't sew up 30 years in oh, just good. an hour and a half. You know oh, what good, I mean? Bro. So I back. appreciate What's you coming. Up? Appreciate yeah. that, bro. Definitely. Right on. Karma's on the way. What goes around comes around. Karma's on the way. There's nothing you could do now. You gotta pay.